Hey, what's happening, gamers? Welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. This is the full walkthrough, part 40, Turnabout for Tomorrow, the Spy. So today, we are going to find out who the long-standing spy has been for the past seven years after Ace Attorney lost his badge, got his badge back, and the world descended into the darkness of law, or the dark age of law, or whatever you want to call it. First like goes under the likes. Uh, I'm still under the weather, so I have a headache, so I might be a little cranky today, so just heads up. Uh, I have a couple possibilities, but I don't know what's going on. Could be um, cat allergies, could be uh, gas leak, could be <laughs> some type of illness. I don't know, but it is now day four of this annoying headache. I, I believe. Yeah, it is, it is the fourth. It's the fourth day. Because this, this started at Saturday. Oh, wait. Third day. That's not how it works. Alright, so, episode five. Turnabout, uh, tomorrow. Wouldn't it be turnabout no tomorrow? Why do they call it turnabout tomorrow? Okay, so, this is the court where I literally do everything, almost. <laughs> That's why I might even end up doing girl voice. A little bit today, so girl voice, girl voice hype. I can't even talk anymore. So last night, what was I up doing? Um, I made a bunch of sh shorts. That's what I did. I made a lot of shorts. So I have several Final Fantasy shorts, so I don't have to delay streams. Spending 15 minutes making a YouTube short, so I have like at least four Final Fantasy shorts primed and ready to go. I think today's short is going to be Dance Battle at 11. The Yuffie dance from um, Chapter Glitter with Gold. It's a fun dance battle between Case continues. Apollo! Alright, cross examine Apollo. So we, we don't have a district lobby anymore. We don't get to hang out in the lobby. We're all in this chilly courtroom. Apollo, where he got smacked in the head. Mr. Justice, please explain yourself. Ah, it's very simple. There isn't much to explain. The defendant, Miss Athena Sykes, might not be innocent. What are you talking about? The case from seven years ago has been settled. I'm not talking about the past here. I'm talking about the present case. I'm still not clear who killed Clay Tarrant. But Apollo, why would you? Because I'm crazy now. Think of me like Zex or, uh, Char. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like Char. Miss Sykes, please listen quietly to what I have to say. Wow, what in the world is Apollo trying to do, jerk face? Your Honor, please allow me a little of the court's time if you would. Hmm, this is a trial of the case from seven years ago? Miss Blackwell, I'd like to ask a favor of you. Just as you lost someone close to you, I lost someone close to me too. I'm sure you want to know the real truth of what happened as much as I do. Apollo. Hmm. <laughs> sure, you know I'm all for the truth. Now let's see you expose the princess's guilt. Judge, I give my permission. Continue with the trial. Da 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 da. All right, a jerko. Jerko. How could Athena be the murderer if she? <sighs> it just doesn't make any sense. Time to continue the greatest case of all time, says Justo. It's an amazing case. All right, Apollo goes crazy. Very, very well. Is that all right with you, Prosecutor Edgeworth? Huh. The prosecution has no objections. Let me hear Mr. Justice's testimony. I'll have the police investigate report brought immediately. Ow, my ear popped. Not you Whoops. too, Edgy. I really hope it's because you have something up your sleeve, Apollo. Very well. Your opening statement, please, Prosecutor Edgeworth. As you wish, let's review the case of the murder of Clay Terran. It was made clear in the previous trial that Solomon Starbuck was not his killer. Therefore, the true culprit was someone else. Hmm. On that day, this culprit waited. Nope. 
On the day, the culprit waited for the astronauts in boarding lounge number one. When the two men made their escape out of the space museum, the killer attacked Mr. Terran with the same type of knife that was used seven years ago. The murderer then escaped into space museum. Next, the director, Yuri Cosmo, switched the launch pads. After that, the culprit exited the Space Museum and escaped via the boarding lounge number two. Therefore, this trial must make clear who Mr. Terran's true killer was, in other words. We must discover who it is that escaped through the Space Museum that day. Mm. Thank you, Prosecutor Edward. Mr. Wright, is the defense ready? Yes, Your Honor. I better rearrange my evidence. Relevant evidence swapped into the court record. Now then, Mr. Justice, your testimony, if you please. Uh, okay. Apollo Justice's accusation. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow Apollo. Wow, Why are Apollo. you like this? Apollo, 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 Apollo. <laughs> so much we've been through. Accusation. Oops. We'll call this his accusation. Alright, here we go. I suspected Miss Sykes of the murder of Clay Tarrant. My growing suspicions were confined when the incriminating evidence presented itself. In addition, she was the only one who could have utilized the launch pad switch to escape. That is why I wish to indict Miss Sykes on the charge of murder. Apollo, why? Wow. And you literally worked with um, Athena as well. Well, that romance ship has sailed. <laughs> if there was anything between those two now, nope. Um, she will always remember that he tried to indict her. Yeah, he's like, want to go on a date later? It's like, how about no? How about um, <laughs> I objection? <wouldn't... laughs> yeah, I wouldn't date you if you're the last man on Earth, Apollo. Yep. All right. Order! Order in the court! <laughs> Mr. Justice, you realize you're charging your own code worker with murder, are you not? Yeah, Your Honor, because that is the conclusion my investigation has led me to. But Apollo, why? How could you suspect me too? I'm not even talking to you, murderer. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. I don't get it. So what do you find... What did you find out over the past few days to make you think this? Cross-examination. Apollo Justice's accusation. I suspected Miss Sykes of the murder of Clay Tarrant. Hold it. What first made you be suspicious of Miss Sykes? It all started when Miss Sykes and I were investigating the crime scene. When she saw the weapon that killed Mr. Tarrant, my bracelet reacted. She said she'd never seen the knife before, but my bracelet told me otherwise. Hmm. And then, every day, every time after that, my bracelet would react when she talked about the case. Poor Apollo must have been beside himself during that investigation. Hmm. I didn't know what to do or think. I couldn't even sleep. In that condition, I knew I wouldn't be any good in court. So I decided to wear an eye patch so I wouldn't be able to perceive any of her tells. What?! So that's why Apollo was acting so weird. Well, why are you wearing an eye patch now, freak? But then the reason Miss Sykes unconsciously reached, uh, reacted to the knife that way is because she stabbed her mother's murderer with one identical to it seven years ago. Objection! But that knife was also the murder weapon that used to kill Clay Taron. My bracelet could have also reacted to her because she knew she was the killer too. Ugh. Hmm. I guess he has a point. But my bracelet wasn't the only reason I became suspicious of her. My growing suspicions were confirmed when this incriminating evidence presented itself. In addition, she was the only one who could have utilized the launch pad switch to escape. That is why I wish to indict Miss Sykes on the charge of murder of my best friend. His points of contention are fingerprints and a lighter and the escape route, huh? Apollo knows how to operate, so I can't use my usual tactics on him. It looks like the only thing I can do here is press him for more information. This doesn't even feel like it is Apollo. 
little kitty and it's in the basement. She's so cute. And a loyal kitty. Boy, you're cute too. You, she's a cat though. Cats are just naturally cute because they're small and they're, you know, very tiny. Look at him, even though he's a monster, you have to admit that he's cute. See? He says, he says, please pet me. Nope, you walked right past him. Walk right past him out of protest. And he was being adorable too. Alright, my growing suspicion was confirmed with this incriminating evidence presented itself. Hold it. That's the lighter that was found in the space museum with the fingerprints on it, right? Slam. But even if it seems decisive, there must be other facts that we don't know about yet. If that's so, go ahead and prove it then. Look, honestly, I don't want to believe it's true either. But... Miss Sykes was the only one who was in the Space Museum at the time of the murder. But Mr. J ah... Pfft. But Apollo! Miss Sykes had absolutely no motive to kill Terran! Objection! Seven years ago, Miss Sykes lived at the Cosmo Space Center. It wouldn't be strange if she had some kind of connection to him. Besides, people sometimes kill for motives we can't even imagine. I know you've seen plenty of cases like that in your own career, Mr. Wright. I still can't believe this is... How could you actually suspect Athena? She's your friend, Apollo! I know, what is the <laughs> matter with him? In addition, she's the only one who could have utilized the launch pad switch to escape. Hold it. I don't believe so. Is it impossible that somebody else could use that same escape route? I'm afraid not, Mr. Wright. Why not? Recall there's a security camera in the boarding lounge. I aimed at one... Wow. Recall there's a security camera in the boarding lounge... Bleh. Recall there's a security camera in the boarding lounge one aimed at the launch pad door. It's the camera that captured Mr. Terran and Mr. Starbuck. But there's also another security camera in boarding lounge number two. Hmm. It recorded Mr. Terran's killer, or rather Miss Sykes, coming out of the space museum. The camera in the boarding lounge too. First I've heard of it, but it makes sense. Athena said she was stuck in the Space Museum the night before the incident, and then was overcome and passed out uh, until around noon the next day. There you go. It was uh, about, um, it was, I was out until about noon of the next day. I didn't even know about the explosions. That makes sense, I guess. Okay. When I woke up, no one was around, so I just went out into the boarding lounge too. That must have been when the camera captured her. And that's what made Apollo suspect her even more. But wait a minute. Hand slam. In that case, it most likely recorded the true culprit as well. Objection! Mm. That's a negative on that one too, Mr. Wright. In the footage taken after the incident, Miss Sykes is the only one who appears. Yeah, right. What? Why? I don't think so. Order! Order on the court, please! That can't be. But if it's true, then it's incredibly incriminating. Wasn't it you who proved in the previous trial that the way the... Uh, wasn't it you who proved in the previous trial that... The way... What? Wasn't it you who proved in the previous trial that was the way the true culprit escaped? Should have been that was the way, not that the way. That doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Was via the Space Museum after the pads had been s switched? No, well, that's the more proper way to say it, Luke. That the way, yo. Not that the way, yo? I gotta get my Ebonics up. I don't even think that that is even that. I think it's just some random... My street. I don't think that's... I've never even heard anyone talk like that. In fact, you previously proved turned on ear, yo. Leaving client high and dry, son. Okay. A fact you previously proved turned on its ear, leaving your client high and dry. I must say, that is vintage Phoenix Wright. No. Better be nug, 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 ug. I don't, oh, I don't know what, what is he saying? What, uh, what, what did a, he say? It'd be. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> It's almost, almost like like yeah. he's having like a. Uh, I don't even think he was. I don't even think that. Um, what's his name was talking street right then. I think he was talking some kind of alien robot way of speaking. 
that the way? Like, he's just missing, he's just literally missing syllables at this point. Edgeworth has many languages under his belt. He would also speak street. <laughs> yeah, that's just one of the languages. That is just one of the languages like that, that he has mastered. that scene from Airplane. It's like, uh, excuse me, sir, I do speak you speak jive? jive? Yes. <laughs> that is why I wish to indict Miss Sykes on the charge of murder. <laughs> Hold it. Believing your client to the end is a basic principle of the good defense. Shouldn't you extend that same principle to your own co-worker? You're mm. probably right. Maybe I'm not even fit to be a lawyer anymore. However, I don't care! This case is special to me, fool! <laughs> Clay was my friend! And that's why I just have to know the truth! Look at you, little paws. What are you doing? Hi, Hello. Cheddar Biscuit! No, don't do that! That's not his name! <laughs> Link! Aww. His name is Link. He has a cool... Cheddar. Don't oh. do that. Don't, don't confuse him. Linky! Nobody's called him that in like seven months. He's Link. Linky! We changed his name. Hi, Linky. Because that other name was stupid. Who names a cat that? It's like, I thought they were going to eat me. They kept calling me food. Right, why do they call you food? That was weird. Yeah, it's like they're your, like, emergency rations. Emergency rations, cat, yeah. All right, sit down if you're going to hang out. You know we're probably going to shout, though. Like, this is the seating spot. You this is the... What are you going to do? Are you going to... You, you're just staring... You need to lie down. There he goes. Now you know when Amber shouts, you're going to take off like a... Well, he wants to hide under the blanket. Okay. Or not. There's a blanket. Apparently he doesn't want to hide under the blanket. Get yourself comfortable, fool. What are you doing? Okay. Apollo suspected his trusted co-worker of killing his friend? That's messed up. To dispel his doubts, he investigated on his own, but that only led to more doubts. Apollo must have been really struggling with this. Well, Apollo may have doubts, but... Shake my head. I'll say it again, Athena Sykes isn't the murderer. Then I have only one thing to say. Evidence is the everything in court, fool. Well, Mr. Wright, think you have the concrete proof to knock down my argument? Um... Mm, your arguments have been very clear, Mr. Justice. And your facts appear to be indisputable. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think of my theory? I think it's stupid like your face. <laughs> it looks yeah. like not even you can deny it. Yeah. Miss Sykes was the only one who used the only possible escape route. Under these circumstances, there can be no other suspect but the defendant. Hey! Unless... You think there was an alternative escape route? Is that what you think, Mr. Wright? Is that what you think, Mr. Wright? <laughs> oh my god. Why is everyone repeating that? Is that what you think, Mr. Wright? Why did I say it? Was there any alternative escape route? Uh... I don't know. Was there any other escape route? I don't know. Um... Alright, guys. Here we go. We're gonna, uh, pull the chat. Of course! No way! Go now! Which we, which do you think it is? It's 50-50. Either it's right or it's wrong. So what are we doing? <sighs> um, was there any alternative escape route? Of course or no way? Uh... What will the chat decide? Hey, Geo. Um, I mean, there must have been other ways... Otherwise, Boza with the stupid eye patch would be right. Did you say Boza? Who's Bo Bo Bozo? Bozo. I've never heard of someone call someone a Boza before. Hey, he has a little mouse. Where did he find that? That's been in the basement. Okay, whatever. Disturbing. That's fine. He's allowed to play with it. Hey, my beanbag chair is in the basement. I would say. I would say, of course. That's what I'm leaning with. In the chat, I mean, there's a lot of courses. There's one, no way. There's a couple no ways. But mostly it's of course. So, of course going once. Of course going twice. Sold! Of course. Yes, of course, there has been. Yes, of course, there must have been. Just don't ask me what that is. 
Mm -hmm. Oh? You're just bluffing again, aren't you? Me? Bluff? No way! He knows me too well. It's fine, Mr. Wright. Even a bluff would suit me just fine. Oh, he doesn't want to indict her. Well, there you go. That's nice. As long as you can... Clear up this doubt inside of me! <laughs> I tried, okay? It's really hard to change my voice for Apollo. <laughs> uh. You should make his voice crack. No, he's in his 20s. Your voice doesn't crack in your 20s. But his does. No, it doesn't. It kind of does. No, it doesn't. Wait, so... Uh... Wait, so that's what this is all about? Your doubts? You idiot! I... I want to believe in Athena! I really do! And what is faith without doubt? That's why I need to question her guilt! So that once the truth finally comes out, I can really fully trust her again. Hmm... So that you can... really trust me, Apollo? Hmm... By putting me on the stand and indicting me for murder and possibly me having to go to prison for life or be executed? That's We're what you need to do? Friends. Okay. So that you can trust me? Wouldn't you do something without trying to get me killed or going All to right, prison? Alright, that's enough from the defendant. Whatever. It seems your junior partner has just showed us what trials are truly all about. Hey, you've been on the murder stand before, remember? From your dad or whatever? I believe you're right. Of course I am. We prosecutors painstakingly question every detail in the pursuit of the defendant. While we lawyers believe in and defend our clients to the end. When both sides go all out against each other, that's when we discover the truth. Precisely. Uh, I mean, precisely. And when the battle is over, we will understand the true meaning of trust. That is exactly what trials are all about. Wouldn't you agree, my friend? I'm not your friend. But I think you were asking, Phoenix. Yes, I couldn't ignore the seed of doubt that was growing inside of me. So I decided I needed to face it head on. No matter what the truth is, what's waiting ahead, I won't be afraid! Ah. Oh. Ah, that's so like Apollo. Always, uh, uber, uber earnest? Who wrote this? That's so like uber Apollo, earnest. always uber earnest about things like that. It is so weird to see Gen Z language in my Ace Attorney game. Why are you saying uber isn't even a word? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It's a Gen Z word. Yes, it that is. That is a slang word that's not in the dictionary. It doesn't matter. It does not count as a word. <laughs> Mr. Justice, I vowed to dispel every last bit of doubt in your heart. Good. Because I want to believe in Miss Sykes again. Until then, I'm wearing this eye patch to look cool. Well, meanwhile, she's gonna hate you forever. I would. All right. You literally are putting her on trial to the point where she might actually go to prison for a crime she never committed. She's fine. Everything's fine. You're really hoping there was an alternative route, aren't you, Apollo? But if I use the process of elimination, there really aren't that many possibilities. Director Cosmos was at the southern exit leaving only the control room and the corridor to Space Museum. Which door could the culprit have escaped through? Uh, Come on, Mr. Wright! Where do you think the culprit escaped to? Ah! Why don't you tell us? Aren't you supposed to be a lawyer, How am I Apollo? supposed to know? No, I mean Apollo. Why doesn't he tell us? He's supposed to be smart and a lawyer. All right, guys. Um, I have no idea because. Well, where where did they say that killer could have escaped? I don't where know. Where did the culprit escape to? This is what we're presented with. Uh huh. Where did the culprit escape to? Well, I mean, there's a there's a there's a hallway right there. The corridor doesn't go anywhere. Well, maybe they just hung out in the museum and pretended to be a cardboard cutout. Uh. Okay. That's what I would do, or. You know, All right, guys. pretend to be a spacesuit on display or something. Am Just Amber, stand really still. Amber says it's a corridor where the killer became a mannequin. Show me corridor! That's what I think. 
They really only could have escaped to the corridor into the Space Museum. All they had to do was use the unconscious Mr. Starbucks Prince to get through the door. Well, the chat is saying corridor as well. It appears that you really are trying to establish Miss Sykes' guilt. Whoop. If the culprit used the route, the only exit would have been in boarding lounge number two. The logical conclusion of your argument is that the killer is none other than the defendant. Argh! Uh, now I'm confused. I knew it! That's the only way it could have been, huh? If the culprit escaped into the corridor that leads to the space museum, then I guess it's true. The only exit would have been into the boarding lounge number two! Or they could have gone to the space... But Miss Sykes was the only person captured by the boarding lounge two security camera. I investigated the crime scene thoroughly. But the only place the culprit could have escaped was uh, the Space Museum corridor. There weren't any other secret corridors or anything. So that leaves us with no other conclusion to draw but that Athena Sykes was the culprit. What could the answer be? Was there really no other escape route? I just had to think, if my na neighbors heard me right now, I'm arguing with myself in three different ways. <laughs> I don't know what to say. What there's a British say? man here arguing, there's a high-pitched teen, and then there's an older guy. <laughs> They're all having a conversation at once. You sound weird. It does sound weird. I'm not trying to be rude. But hold on a second, what if? Mm. Well, Struggle's saying it could have been the control room. What about the control room, Struggle? What about outside the space center, says Don? Where did those mysterious leaves we saw in the corridor come from? They're from... What's her face? Oh, the leaves! What if they're the clue to the culprit's real escape route? Somebody went outside! Somebody, Somebody went was out outside! The window? They... I think it's possible that the culprit escaped into the space museum, but then came out using a route other than boarding lounge number two. Somebody was outside. Oh? Launchpad 1 and Space Museum were switched after the bombing, meaning the Space Museum corridor was moving along the rail at the time. Which is exactly when the alternative escape route opened up for the culprit. Are you kidding me? Nope. Hmm. Judging by the intense look in your eyes, I take it you're serious. Very well, then, Mr. Wright. Do tell. The corridor... Where could the culprit have gone from the museum corridor besides boarding lounge number two? The launch site? I don't... Somebody went outside. Well, how did they go outside? Uh, somebody went out... Uh... Hi. Did you come when I called you? Hello, kitty. Hello, kitty. You coming up? Uh, you gonna come up? You have a cat thingy on your nose. Well, maybe just present... Uh, this is, which means the... So it says, where else could the culprit have gone? I would just poke a uh, press on the grass. The grass? What grass? Just the grass, like, where um... Where are you seeing the grass? Outside where the Space Museum is. So the launch site? No. Like, that grass is that dark area outside of it, I think. This? No. No, the grass is, like, out there. What? Out there. Outside. There! That's there? The that's what I think. Okay. I think that looks like grass to me. Okay, alright. I don't know. What do you guys think? The grass? Where there's leaves? You could... Pick up a leaf. Okay. Is that is this what everyone else is seeing? From then outside. Mm, I hope this is right because I don't really know. I mean, we're. Whatever. I'm guessing because there was leaf in there. All right, we found something odd while investigating the museum uh, this afternoon, actually. Namely, a few dead leaves on the floor. Considering where the dead leaves came from, they point us to exactly where the culprit escaped to. Mm. Yeah, I remember seeing some leaves myself, actually. Ha! Huh? Do you mean? Bloop, bloop. I'm sorry, that's my 
That's my launch pad moving noise. It's fine. Yep, while the space museum was in motion just beyond the corridor safety door. Ta-da! Was an alternative place that the culprit could have escaped to. In other words, the culprit's real escape route was... The area outside the space center. Ha! Ah, you're freaking insane! Oops. Now I have four voices talking to myself. <laughs> do you know how possible? Do you know? How he, do you know how impossible that would be? The corridor is like a level with the third floor. Even if the culprit tried to leap to the outside wall of the space building, they would fall to their death. Objection! Objection. Ordinarily, yeah. But after the bombing incident, the culprit could make use of a certain item. Mm. And what item was that exactly, Mr. Wright? Alright. This is what the culprit used to leap outside the wall of the main building. Uh, uh, how would they leap outside the wall? A stuffed animal! I don't know. What else do we have? We have emergency, emergency ladder. Uh, that's better than a stuffed animal. Try that, I guess. I would use a stuffed animal. I think we should. It go worked with... for Jackie Chan and Accidental Spy. I think the ladder would work better. A little. Okay. The ladder. An emergency ladder. Yeah, there was an emergency ladder in the fourth floor robotics lab, and it was used that day after the explosion to help evacuate people. Miss hmm. Blackwell herself used the ladder to escape down to ground level. Recall what the launch pads were switched after the ladder was lowered. Hmm. The corridor could have passed by the ladder while the pad was being switched. And that's when the culprit literally sprang into action. Oh, wow. And leapt onto the ladder! What? Why would you have imagined? What? Order! Order well, the this court. Music is pretty cool right now. Well, an alternative escape route seems to have marched. Which means someone other than Miss Sykes could have been the culprit, right? Objection. Not so fast. Making things up on the fly in an attempt to sway the court again, Mr. Wright? Your theory has so many holes it puts Swiss cheese to shame. I like Swiss cheese. All right, then. Name one. I have here detailed information about the Space Center. According to this, the distance between the museum corridor and the main building during movement is... A full 20 feet. 20 feet! Well, maybe they busted... They broke the their leg. 20 feet? You're um. pulling my leg, right? In addition, the corridor is three floors from the ground. Or roughly 50 feet. What's more, the culprit would have would be leaping to a precarious place. An unstable ladder. Oh, wow. Erk! Human beings feel fear in dangerous situations. It's basic survival instinct. An ordinary person would certainly hesitate before jumping. Or even freeze in fear and not fall at all. Objection! But the culprit had just murdered someone. They weren't in an ordinary state of mind. Objection! Nevertheless, why would they have taken that kind of risk? They could even have waited for the switch to be complete and escape to the boarding lounge number two. Objection! Hmm. Because there was a security camera in the boarding lounge. The culprit knew that they would be recorded if they left the space museum that way. Objection! In that case, the culprit could have hidden in the museum until things settled down. <laughs> you want some coffee, Linky? And then blended in with the other people after the museum was opened. That's a good point. But you claim that despite all of this, the culprit took a 20-foot death-defying leap, and all in the brief moment of the corridor and the ladder passed by one another? Oh, that's also a good point. They would have needed a running start while the corridor was moving to make that jump. Mm. Hi, you. There we go. There's no room in between us. There's no room in between us. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Why? 
Yeah, I just slashed my hand just from walking. I said there was no space, and yet you literally clawed your place of space. You clawed right into our heart. No, that's not good, Amber. You bit right into my leg. No, he didn't bite. You clawed right into my heart. You decided to scratch it <laughs> on my arms and legs. <laughs> it's not funny. He was just walking over me and he cut me. Mm -mm. Hang on, guys. Gotta put in a band aid. It's. This is, uh, this is so annoying. Like, every day I get scratched by him. I'm amazed I haven't developed cat scratch fever. I'm amazed we haven't. Mm -hmm. That's a thing, actually. Oh, wow. Cat it's... scratch fever is a thing, it's an illness. It's el or, Link, you're gonna give Luke an illness. He's gonna give me an illness. He scratches me every day. They have, uh, they would have needed a running start while the corridor was moving to make that jump. If their timing was off, they couldn't jump far enough. It would have been instant death. <gasps> what kind of person would attempt something like that? A spy! Stop bringing up good points, Edgy! No. This true culprit of yours is nothing but a figment of your imagination. Ooh. Why do you always have to point out every flaw? Wow. Mr. Edgeworth's right. That does sound pretty insane. Uh, the culprit would have had to be someone who feels no fear, like a stuntman. Mm. Oh, everyone yeah. feels fear on some level. Mm, right? Mm. Maybe. Wait a minute. Aha! I've got it this time. I can prove that there is someone who could have used this alternative escape route. <gasps> How can you now? This proves the possibility of a person who could have used this alternative escape route. What does? Um. Uh, one oh, sec. We already. One sec, guys. Time code. Ladder. Probably present something with the phantom. <laughs> so we have to present an imaginary person. Here's an idea. Here's what proves that someone could have done this. An imaginary person we made up in our mind. Like called down. the Phantom. Like down. Guess we're presenting the Phantom's profile. I don't know. Like down, fool. <laughs> He's like, I'm not a fool. I'm very smart. What are you doing, Luke? You don't purr when I rub your back. Ah, he's coming to my side. <laughs> yes. All right. So we're going to present the phantom <laughs> psyche thing. Here we go. Phantom. Phantom going once. Phantom going twice. Phantom. Take that. What's that, Mr. Wright? Something you missed, you idiot. This is why you always be a sidekick. Hmm. This is a certain person's very interesting psyche profile. The subject doesn't experience feelings like a normal people do. Like a normal people. In other words, this person doesn't feel <laughs> happiness, sadness, or fear. The subject doesn't experience like a normal people do. Doesn't feel fear? What? Right? You can't be serious! Oh, without the constant... Without the constraint of fear... He could easily do what an ordinary person wouldn't dare. Hmm. Just as you or I could do a broad jump on the ground without the slightest of fear. A robot? What? That's what Sons of Gaming says. No. This subject hmm. could make a 20-foot leap 50 feet up in the air. Slam. He could easily choose this extreme way of escaping without hesitation. So you're saying that a person without fear, the alternative route would be quicker and eliminate the chance that they would be spotted. Oh, wow. That's definitely pretty extreme, Mr. Wright. But that was... But was there such a person there at the scene? Yes. The Phantom, the mysterious shadowy figure who keeps popping up. <gasps> oh, dear! It's that Phantom again. The Phantom? Again? I knew the Phantom was there behind the scenes of the Space Center bombing, but I wasn't sure if he was connected to the murder of Clay Terran as well. However, now it's all clear. 
The Phantom is the one who not only bombed the Space Center, but also killed Mr. Terran. Nani? What? <laughs> I didn't get to scream. Oh! I feel better now. Now I feel included. Aww, that's great, Luke. Order in the court. Order, I say. Mr. Knight, please continue. I will, Your Honor. There was just too many similarities between this case and the one from seven years ago. But why, you may ask? It can only be because both incidents were the work of the same phantom. <gasps> so then this phantom is the one who killed Clay? But who is he? Money? This phantom has been haunting this case, pulling the strings in the background. I don't know bum, who the phantom bum, bum, is. Bum, bum, bum. Who could this... <laughs> Unidentified international spy B. Right. Uh... The escape route must have been part of the Phantom's plan from the start. Now I'm agreeing with this Phantom nonsense. As for tricking the Director Cosmos into switching the launch pads, the bomb was on the second floor, was meant to make the elevators and stairs unusable. And that's why he gave advance warning and planted the bombs where he did. Yeah, I mm. think you're right. But, it doesn't explain this one last thing. Um, it's Aura now. Oh, uh, so I lowered my emergency ladder, like the detective leading the evacuation told me to. But it was such a pain. Why couldn't they have used the ladders in the other rooms? The robotics lab wasn't the only room with an emergency ladder. But he couldn't have made that leap unless he was certain which one it would be. Hmm. So you mean... The Phantom must be someone who knew that particular ladder was going to be used? That's right. Hmm, who could it be? Huh. Wait a minute. So I lowered the emergency ladder like the detective leading the evacuation told... No! The Phantom was Blackwell's no. sister? No, 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 no! My favorite character! No! Nuts! Miss oh. Blackwell lowered the ladder after being told by the detective <laughs> leading... Ah! The Phantom was the director! You've got to be kidding me! <clears throat> Did you figure it out right? Do you know who the Phantom is? Whoops. Yeah, I do. Why? Who is it? Who killed Clay? Uh-oh. Our mystery spy known as the Phantom is none other than... Detective Fulbright. What? I know! What do you mean it's Detective Fulbright? I know! What do you mean? After the explosions, a member of the staff crossed paths with a certain detective. I was on duty on the fourth floor. It was quite the madhouse, I tell you. But he believes in justice. As for the detective who was leading the evacuation from the fourth floor, he had a very specific object objective in mind. There. So I lowered my emergency ladder like the detective leading the evacuation told me to. His objective was to secure his own escape route. Mm. That's her again. We lowered an emergency ladder from a fourth floor window and escaped that way. Once everyone else got out safely, I made my way down too and headed to the shelter. This is a detective you all know. He's even lead detective on the current case. No! Luke, no! He appears to be a very emotional man, but his psychic profile says he's without emotion. Take that. Take that. What? He's also always wearing gloves. What are you saying? You mean the Phantom is Detective Bobby Fulbright? Exactly. We were all taken in by his fake persona. 
Detective Fulbright's real identity is the Phantom. <gasps> no! I don't like this case. First that nice guy that fed the fish, and now the Phantom. I don't like this. Why, Capcom? Why are you doing this to us? Why can't they have it be somebody random we don't know? I don't like this. I really like that character. He's my favorite. Order in the court. Mr. Knight, how could this be? I love this man. He's so cool, I know. It's easy, Your Honor. Detective Fulbright was leading the fourth elevator evacuation effort. Our first clue is that he made no attempt to have any other ladder put to use. The ladder in the robotics lab is the only one he ordered to be lowered. So the second is that he directed everybody to the basement shelter via this ladder. Verily, it was all part of his plan to create an escape route. Hmm. After Detective After Detective Fulbright saw it, uh, after the detective saw it too, wow. Well, after the detective saw to it that the ladder was lowered from the robotics lab, he went to the lounge where he killed Clay Terran and escaped into the Space Museum. The museum oh. started moving slowly, so he waited for the time and got a running start. Why? And just as the corridor was passing the ladder, he leaped onto it. Ah, oh, I don't believe it. That detective did all that? Was it really him? I mean, all this time I thought he was... Sorry we didn't catch your name. My name? I'm Bobby Fulbright. The heroic detective who defends our good citizens from evil. The champion of justice who comes running whenever you're in need. And my catchphrase? Injustice we trust! What? Then his concern for Simon was also just one big act? I swore to reform Prosecutor Blackwell and make him a valued member of society again. So I can't just sit by and watch him give in to his emotions and tear the defendant apart. That monster killed Clay! He had me completely fooled! Come to think of it, he's the only- he's the one who brought that blood-stained lighter to court, too! The scumbag even made me turn on Athena! Darn it! How the heck did I fall for that? I don't know, Apollo! For him to have wormed his way into the police department as well... N -ner Nar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would just go. Yeah. I would do because you. Your Honor, the defense demands to question Detective Bobby. <laughs> Bobby <laughs> Flay. I almost said it. Your Honor, the defense demands to question to talk. <laughs> Your Honor, the defense demands Detective Fulbright question thing now here. Right. Yes, I agree. We need to hear from him right away. The court will take a shorter recess, and then De Detective Fulbright will take the stand. If he's mm. still here. It can't be Fulbright. He's all night, says Sammy. Wow. What is going on? Yes, it was Fobby Bullwright, says little Mr. Divergence. Bobby Flay. Hey, it's Bobby Flay, Bobby Flay here. here. Detective Bobby Flay. I'm gonna teach y'all how to make the perfect hamburger. I'm I'm gonna teach. I'm gonna put everybody in the mince now, meat. Like most people, they kid. they when they're making a burger out on the grill, they're not gonna add any spice to it. What I'm gonna show you is how to add some zing and kapow to your burger. My favorite character. Why? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. Now I know I'm innocent. If it wasn't for everything you did, I, 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 uh... And no, stay, stay. It's okay. It's okay. She's done. She's done. Lie down, fool. She's done. He's like, well, you promise she won't hear my, hurt yes. my ears again. Don't thank me yet. We what? still have an uphill <laughs> battle to fight. You got it, boss. I have an apology to make. Oh, uh, Apollo! Hello. Uh, well, this is awkward. Um, Athena, can you do me a favor? I don't think so, Apollo. Can you do me a favor? Why don't you leave? Could, could you, um, punch me, please? 
That would be great. Yes, I am ready for that. Amber, Amber, too loud, too loud, too loud. What? Why should I do that, Apollo? Stay. It's okay. There's no shouting. There's no shouting. No shouting. Oh, wow. He really doesn't like shouting. Why should I do that, Apollo? Because I should have believed in you. I let that seed of doubt inside me get the best of me. I'm really sorry that I didn't trust. Ouch! Ah, don't be such a dope! I was really touched by what you did. Uh, now that you're... What are you talking about? I, I want to believe in Athena. I really, really do. But what is faith without doubt? That's why I need to question her guilt. So that once the truth finally comes out, I can really fully trust her again. Great. You took the time and effort to put me on the stand and make it so I almost went to jail for murder for life for a crime I never committed. You took all those horrible memories of me killing my mom and you made me talk about them over and over and over again. You made me realize if I'm ever on trial for murder again and people tried to basically put me away for life for something I never did, I know you'll never have my back. Read the line. You took the time and effort to genuinely think about who I am and what I'm made of. After all, how could I punch a true friend like you, Apollo? Except for I just did. You didn't have any trouble slapping him, though. Thanks, Athena. And thanks for waking me up to reality again. Ha ha ha. I guess I know who to call if I ever get sleepy in court. It looks like you'll have some promising young people working under you. Wait, I don't know who that is. Oh, whoops. Okay, never mind. I thought that was a bailiff. Edgy! Yeah, I think they're pretty great myself. And they're not afraid to keep me in line. Anyway, I have some very good news. Oro Blackwell has surrendered and hostages have been set free. Leave Zelda alone. Hmm. Trucy and all the others? Oh, thank goodness. Miss Blackwell said she had something she really needed to do. Mm. So I granted her a special permission to do what she must. I wonder what it is. Miss Blackwell! <sighs> hmm. I didn't come to apologize, if that's what you're thinking. My actions are what allowed the truth of what happened seven years ago come to light. But I did come because I had something to say to all of you. Leave Zelda alone, brute. Okay. Miss Aurora. Uh, Miss Aura. Hmm. She better not be here to complain about something. Hmm. Miss Blackwell, I want to apologize to you. The fact that you couldn't trust the court system is our fault. Ha ha ha! Yes, it's true. The courts are filled with incompetent idiots. Still, I suppose I could let you handle the rest of this case from me. Oh, Miss Aura, does this mean you're starting to trust the system again? Oh! Uh, of course not. Be quiet, hunk of junk. Why? It's just... I wouldn't mind if you were the ones who took Metis' killer down. Leave it to us. We'll get him. So I guess that means she's starting to trust us, at least. That's good. Aura. Simon, I'm so glad you and the princess were cleared of all suspicion. <laughs> and it's all thanks to me and my robots. You'd better be grateful. Huh. I never imagined you would go that far. Though you always were extreme. Huh. But I don't recall ever requesting your help. Ha! Huh. As closed as ever, I see. Well, now that you've been released, I guess it's my turn to go live in the slammer. I just hope you're none of the you're not the prosecutor for my trial. 
You'd probably give me the death penalty. Huh. You know me all too well. I guess love can take a variety of expressions, including stunted in their case. Why would he give her the death penalty when she did everything to save his life? But I was truly about to be executed tomorrow. Though, because of you, it looks like I won't be crossing the sticks just yet. You have my heartfelt thanks, Aura. I'm sorry I caused you so much anguish. Simon! <sighs> I'm so glad, Simon. So very glad to hear you say that. Aura. All right. That's enough of that. Bailiff, take me to the detention center. Okay. Off we go. Well, what Miss Blackwell did was inexcusable, but it's clear she did it out of love for her brother. I still can't wrap my mind around Detective Fulbright being the Phantom. I I can't believe he killed Clay. Still up on that, huh? Right. And murdered my mentor, which brought great distress upon little Athena. Chief Prosecutor. Yes? I would ask a favor. Would you allow me to stand at the prosecutor's bench for this trial? I wish to claim the Phantom's head by my own hand. Hmm. That was my plan all along, after all. It is highly unconventional for a man of my position to stand in court. Hmm. Sir. The formal paperwork has yet to be filed, but you are hereby conditionally released. Please take the prosecutor's bench in your official capacity, and uncover the truth by your own hand. Much obliged. The day to part with these has come at last. Chief Prosecutor, could you? What about his weird samurai makeup? How long have I waited? Maybe it's the sense of freedom, but even the air seems fresher, the light brighter. And I will relish slashing that blacker Fulbright to shreds without mercy. He tortured him, too. He electrocuted him all the time. I know, right? I don't have to be able to read his heart to see how happy he is. Ah, I'm so glad, but I won't cry just yet. After all, we've still got a trial to finish. It's okay to cry, Athena. I promise. Prosecutor Blackwell, Mr. Wright, please avenge Clay's death for me. What are you talking about, Apollo? You're coming to the defense's bench with me. I am? Well, I can't expect Athena to assist me now, can I? She's the defendant. That leaves you, Apollo. But are you sure you want me? I'm a traitor. I, I took a leave of absence and everything... Ah, don't worry about it, kid. Our office is pretty short-handed, and, well, you've all I've got, so. Thank you, Mr. Wright. What about Trucy? She's not a lawyer. <laughs> Apollo. Athena, I can say it with all my heart now. I believe in your complete innocence, and now we're going to prove it to the world. Yeah. Thank you, Apollo. I know you can do it. Oh, so, you won't be needing that eye patch anymore, right? Right, because I'm fine now. But wasn't he just in a bombing accident? Like, what happened to all his injuries? Mm 
<laughs> now, this is the Apollo I know, but where's all your burn damage and bruises? Wasn't that case just yesterday? <laughs> or was it like a week I ago? I don't know. It's like, I'm fine. I can imagine. I was just imagining him coming out of the hospital, like him in his hospital bed, bed all bandaged up. It's like, I don't need this anymore. Dun, 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 dun. And the nurses are like, sir, you can't get up now. I'm fine. Let's go for it. Did he heal like Wolverine or something? Is he a mutant? Dun, 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 dun. I don't know. What do we have to do to... Do we have to sign a petition to get a Apollo Justice anime? Like, I think we really need an Apollo Justice anime. Like, that anime did really well. They need to do more. Now this is the Apollo I know. Welcome back, Apollo! It's almost time for the trial to restart, though. It looks like you have things well in hand. Yup. I should head back to the prosecutor's office. But why? Well, I want to look into a few things. Namely, the first people on the scene seven years ago. The facial data registered by the robot and Detective Fulbright's background. Sounds great, Edgy. Thanks. I expect to be... I expect to be repaid with victory, right? Now if you'll excuse me. Okay, you two. All set to go? You bet I am! Let's do this, boss! My junior sidekicks are ready! Sidekick time! This is the final battle. The murder of Apollo's friend. The courtroom bombing incident. Alright, thank you. Appreciate that, Sons of Gaming. So much blood to see. Blood everywhere. Blood on the chair. Yep. Blood on the floor. And the case that ushered in the Dark Age of Law seven years ago. <laughs> A bloody mess. Def Destiny has called us to bring the one responsible for it to justice today. Mm, that's right, Brandon. Bobby Fulbright has a lot of explaining to do! December 20th, 527 mm. p.m. District Court. Courtroom. Number four. Time to take on Detective Bobby Fulbright, says Broads11. That's right. Let us now reconvene. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has never been more ready in its life. You know, this is the first time we've been at the defense bench together since I debuted. Uh, now that you mention it, although back then I thought you were more loud than you were reliable. You've really come a long way since then, Apollo. You've grown a lot, kid. Well, there have been some hiccups, but I guess I've done pretty well. He's still got that ego of his, though. Ah, uh, yes. Wait, what happened to all his, um... Never mind. Prosecutor Blackwell, with the seven-year mistake now resolved, you can finally take your rightful place. Um, yes, I guess we can keep the chit-chat for later. Um, oh. Bailiff, please bring in the witness immediately! Mm -hmm. Even with those handcuffs off, Prosecutor Blackwell seems to be pretty much the same. Yeah, he's hardened by prison. Uh, seven years of grumpiness doesn't go away easily, I guess. He's be invited to more family barbecues. Aha! Bobby Fulbright here! I heard I was needed on the stand, so here I am! Detective Fulbright, do you know why you've been called to give testimony? Yup, because there is only one reason why I'd be called. And that is because it's time for justice! In justice we trust! Objection! Objection! You can't fool us with that act anymore! Your justice is nothing but lies! What? Are you questioning the integrity of my sense of justice? Uh-oh... I mean, sure, sometimes I make mistakes, but hey! Uh-oh, this is gonna be hard. He's acting exactly the same as always. Tell me about Ooh. it. He must be feeling awfully confident. Mm-hmm. Fulbright, if you wish to dispel your suspicion, then let's get to your testimony. All right, fine! You want me to prove my righteousness? I can certainly do that. Can you now? 
104.50 Embodiment of Justice. If All Might was a villain, yes. Aha! I am the very embodiment of justice itself! I won't have you make me into a villain with your far-fetched arguments. And this bit about the escape route is only a theory. You don't have any proof. What do... What we do is proof that Athena Sykes is the culprit. This lighter has her prints on it. Wow. Mm, oh, wow. So you're saying the suspicions against you are completely false? And that the defendant is real culprit. Oh, that, uh. that's right. Mr. Lawyer's escape route is totally circumstantial. He doesn't have any proof that I made a big leap onto a ladder. We don't mm. have proof. You were correct about that. Huh. However, you don't have any proof for your claim either. No, I guess you're right. But you can't define justice with evidence. You can define it anyway. Justice just is. Objection! Objection! Don't make me break out a dictionary on you. <gasps> no, please don't throw the book at me. <laughs> uh, told me the phantom didn't just make me set up a stupid pun for him. Uh, let's try not to lose focus, all right? Mm. But my justice is crystal clear. What's not clear are your eyes! Wake up and smell the justice! <laughs> Silence. Enough. Oh! Yeah, I bet Blackwell would be really mad at him. Enough of your rubbish, Fulbright. If you have any ounce of justice, then you'll answer the court's questions and prove it. Uh, Prosecutor Blackwell? Prosecutor Blackwell looks torn. Well, Fulbright was his partner, after all, for seven years. Hmm, yep. Prosecutor Blackwell is right. The truth will be revealed in the cross-examination. The suspicions against Detective Fulbright are, at this point, only suspicions. It's my duty I will drudge the claims against the detective as impartially as I can. Does anyone have any objections? That's fine, Your Honor. Ha ha ha! Now ask away and don't hold back! Well, there didn't appear to be any objections. Very well, Mr. Wright, please begin your cross-examination. <clears throat> cross-examination. Yay! Yay! Embodiment of justice. <laughs> ah, I am very much the embodiment of justice. Hold it! Hold it! The embodiment of justice, huh? Those are just empty words. But they say if you keep saying something, it can eventually become the truth. Isn't that how <laughs> people make their dreams come true, too? By wishing over and over? I mean... All right, all right, all right. Let's move on. Not really, though. You also have to work towards... Uh... I won't have you make me into a villain with your far-fetched arguments. Hold it! Ah, arguments are hardly far-fetched. There's careful reasoning behind my theory. Ah, yes, well, apparently there's reasoning behind even a tofu burger. But what we have against Miss Sykes, though, is not just reasoning, but solid evidence. And it's called the lighter with Miss Sykes' fingerprints on it and the victim's blood. Ooh. Yeah, that's true, but... Wait, Detective Fulbright was the one who brought that evidence to the trial. Yeah. If you harbor any suspicions, I suggest you ask Fulbright, right, don't know? Especially after that lighter. Oh, yeah, he's right. What exactly should I ask him about? Uh... Um... Uh, number of prints, position of prints. I don't know. I mean, I guess so. I don't know. I guess how many would... I don't know. What does the chat think? I guess how many... All right, chat. We're going to use our lifeline. Uh, so the number of prints, the position of the prints. It's 50-50. What do you guys think? The chat is saying number of prints. Number of prints is what the chat is saying? Number of prints, number of prints, number of prints, number of prints. All right. Number of prints it is. So how many prints were found exactly? Uh, three. The thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger of the right hand. 
Your Honor, that is an important statement. Could we please have it, uh... Added to my testimony? You got it, friend! He beat me to it. Ha ha ha! Be it investigating or testifying, speed is the key! Wow, this guy is already ready to add it to his testimony. Three prints were on the lighter, the thumb, the index, and the middle finger of the right hand. Hold it! So, three prints from a right hand were found on the lighter, huh? Are you certain of this? I'd stake my life on it! Mr. Wright, isn't it odd he's saying the prints are from Athena's right hand? Why would you say that? Well, think about it for a sec. Athena always wears gloves on her right hand, right? So there's no way she'd leave prints, those three fingers, from her right hand. Mm -hmm. Hey, great point! Why didn't I catch that one? That's Detective weird. Fulbright, I'm sure you heard your discussion just now. Although, about Miss Sykes always wears a glove... Wow. About how Miss Sykes always wears a glove on her right hand. Aha! Well, I have only one thing to say that. Do you have evidence that she was wearing the glove at the time of the incident? Uh, I guess we don't. If you want to prove the defendant innocent, you'll have to ask better questions than that. I like I need a lecture from you, Smiles Magoo. <clears throat> hmm, should I try asking about something else? Uh... I mean, we could ask about the position. I don't know, we might as well. Unless. Uh... Position, let's press on like this. I mean, we could ask what the position was. I don't know if it will help the case or not. I mean, all right, guys, um, the prince position or let's press on lifeline used again. What do you guys think it is? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say we should ask about a second thing. We might as well get all the information. I don't know. Ask about a certain thing. Mm. Hmm. The prince position, okay. Well, we're kind of tied. We're tied between press on and More, the prince position. All right. A lot so, of people are saying press on, though. Um, Amber, what do you say? Well, the chat is saying press on, so I guess we'll just press on. All right, Amber wants to press on. Okay. Mm, I guess if, if it's really important, we'll come back to this again. If not, then it won't bring us back here, probably. All right, here we go. Let's press on. All right, thank you guys for the help. Let's proceed with your testimony, shall we? Aha! Ha ha ha! Certainly, certainly! Hmm, this statement that was added, I'm not sure if it's relevant or not. Well, at least he seems willingly to answer our questions. Let's keep asking about different things and see if we can uncover an inconsistency. Detective Fulbright is a tough adversary than I thought. But then we press him on everything? Yeah. I'm very embodiment of justice itself. Mm -hmm. I won't have you make me into a villain! And this bit about the escape route is only a theory. You don't have any proof! What do we have is proof that Athena Sykes is the culprit! This lighter with her prints on it! Three prints were on the lighter. Um... Um, let's see. So, the added statement was about the lighter and how many prints. So... Um, maybe we can see what we can present on that one, since we've already pressed everything. So maybe we can see what's in our, uh, court doc- uh, whatever they're called. Um, okay, the ladder, um, there's the lighter, there's her statement. The Purpel the lighter with an emblem in their left hand. Hey! With an emblem in their left hand, the lighter with There we her. go. Oh, it says that the, she held her the- statement, yeah. The person held the lighter in their left hand. Objection! Got him. You say the prints were from the right hand, is that correct? That's right. Very clear prints. All right, but, uh, just doesn't add up. Hmm, what doesn't add up? Hmm. According to Miss Blackwell, who saw the culprit herself... Oh, wow. This person held the lighter in their left hand. Oh, wow. Oh? So here is the dilemma before us, detective. Why are the prints on the lighter from a right hand instead of a left? Hmm, 
good height. It doesn't make sense, does it? Your Honor, this lighter can only be called incriminating evidence. The witnesses' claims don't even hold water. Detective Fulbright, I hope you have a good explanation for this. Hmm, I just can't understand it. They're definitely right-hand prints. But then, why are they inconsistent with Miss Blackwell's statement? Hmm, I've got it. Um. What have you got, Detective? The mirror! The witness must have seen a reflection of the culprit in the mirror. What? Go on. Miss Blackwell was looking in through the window of the boarding lounge one, wasn't she? I believe so. <laughs> if you mean the little window in the back and to the right of the room... That's right, and across the room on that opposite wall... ...is a large mirror. Hmm, I do remember seeing it. Ah! So you're saying... Yes, the culprit Miss Blackwell saw must have been a reflection of that person in the mirror. Wow. There's no way! I see. In that case, her right and left would appear reversed, wouldn't they? Ha <laughs> ha Now do you see? That's the logic of pure justice! Objection! Objection! But your argument is only conjecture. You don't have any proof that uh, Miss Blackwell saw was a reflection. Silence! Oh, wow. I don't know. You'd sooner nick yourself than him like that. Put more muscle into it. Huh? Ha 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 ha! That's right! Besides, the lighter couldn't have been in the left hand. And why not? Miss Blackwell said she saw an earth emblem on the lighter, didn't she? The emblem is only on one side of the lighter. You're right. Uh, there's a no emblem on the other side. Exactly. As blank and smooth as the judge's fine scalp. If the culprit held what? the lighter in their left hand, they would have covered the emblem. Oh. What's more, this is kind of lighter you flick open with your thumb before lighting. So if the culprit held it in their left hand with the emblem on the out invisible, they wouldn't have been able to open it like alone light it. But if they had light... Ha. But if they had held it in their right hand, they could easily open it and light it. That all means that the culprit was definitely holding the lighter in their right hand. No! Come back, my beautiful contradiction! Huh. It appears you planted a flower that bears no fruit. <laughs> so, how it withers before my flower of justice? He's tough. He's managed to discredit almost everything I've proven up to this point. Wow. Injustice we trust! Now do you see I'm not the phantom you're talking about? I mean, are you sure there really is a spy? I bet they're just a figment of your imagination. Sob, it's so sad, so very sad, but I'm afraid Mitch Sykes is the culprit! Wow, dude. Alright, I'm starting to hate him now. Detective Fulbright, I believe you said that the emblem is only on side of the lighter. Are you sure about that? Hmm, of course I'm sure. Why don't you take a look for yourself and see? You see an earth emblem on both sides of the lighter? Oh! oh! The manlet! Manlet time! I knew it! <laughs> You're lying, detective! It's time for the manlet! P pardon me? You mean... Yes, my manlet reacted to a statement about the emblem. He's definitely hiding something big. And I think if I use my talent, we might be able to figure it out. Manlet time. Justice Dono, you're to use that cheat of yours again. It's not cheating, Prosecutor Blackwell. It's my manlet. <laughs> huh. Very well. Whether I like it or not, I suppose we should use whatever works right now. Go on, then. We have Prosecutor Blackwell's reluctant blessing, apparently? Okay, Apollo, you're up. Your ghost, then. Detective Fulbright, you repeat that last statement one more time. What in the world are you up to? Hmm. All right, fine. I'll say it as many times as you like. Listen carefully. The Earth Emblem is only on the side that you can see when held in the right hand. Hmm. 
bracelet power. Uh. Well, I guess we. <laughs> the Earth yes. emblem is only on the left side that you can see when held in the right hand. All right. Well, we looked at his face. I'm still looking. I'm looking at his face the entire time, and then we'll move All on right. to another body part. All right. Well, Listen I again. guess we'll try it again. I guess his tie isn't really. Well, I guess you can try. I'm gonna it. try his tie. Do, 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 do. See what's going on? I love this song. Well, it's time to look at his hands now because it meant nothing. Yep, now it's time for the hands. Look at this hand. about to say the statement. Let's talk about his hand. Oh, that's... This is his right hand, though. So I guess we'll try the... If we'll it, try the left hand, then. Alright, so that hand's clean. <laughs> it's thumb move! Whoa! So when he said Earth Emblem, the thumb moves. So now we have to wait for it to go over again. Until he says Earth Emblem again. Right. That you can see when held in the right hand. When, when held, held in, in the, the right, right hand. hand. I saw your thumb move. <laughs> yeah, this is... I'm using my eyesight. <sighs> Sword of Omens, give me sight beyond there sight. There it is! Gotcha! Oh! Well, you're so moved! You're guilty! Death Chamber! Detective Fulbright, you might not be aware of it yourself, but <laughs> whenever you say the phrase, the Earth Emblem, your left thumb moves. Whoa. In fact, it appears as though you're running it uh, along the edge of your holster. Ooh. Oh, Mr. Lawyer, I don't have the foggiest notion of what you're talking about. Yeah, get the gun away from him if he's the spy. Yeah, he has a weapon on him. He could, like, literally kill us all. There should be no weapons in the courtroom. No, officers are always armed. Oh, wow. But I'm saying he's on the witness stand. He should have his weapon removed. Be that as it may, I know it has something to do with the lighter. Let me examine it. But why? You're not making any sense. You just can't. Silence! Huh. You still... and do as you're told, Fulbright. If you have nothing to hide, you shouldn't mind having them look-see, should you? What? Not you too, Prosecutor Blackwell! Whoopsies. Mm, I'm not sure what this is all about, but if Prosecutor Blackwell insists, it must be something important. I will allow the defense to examine the lighter. Hmm. Good. Now maybe we learned something new. Yeah. I hope so. Now let's check every inch of this thing. Um, so... I mean... Looks like there's a lot more than three prints on that. There's a lot of prints on this. Oh, that's a lot of blood. Uh, kind of gross. So what am I supposed to be looking at? Examine the... Well... Ugh, the back is covered with blood. Gross. Say, do you notice anything funny about this blood stain? No. You're right, it suddenly breaks off unnaturally. Um, okay. Suppose the lighter was held with the right hand so that the emblem was visible. Whoops. If the prints would be around the emblem and on the lid where you open it. You're right, there's definitely something off here. Maybe the, maybe the top part was twisted on differently or something. Hmm, it's hard to tell if the prints are from a right hand or a left hand by looking. I don't think looking at each print with the naked eye will tell us everything, anything new. But this lighter definitely hides a secret. I agree. Let's check it out carefully. Honestly, that little earth thingy kind of looks like it's a switch or something. 
Like, it looks like it's like a... So this Earth emblem Detective Fulbright was talking about. See anything noteworthy? Uh-huh. Hey, look at this! The emblem's actually some kind of button! Oh, wow. Um... It's a gun! It transformed into something! A handle! A trigger! Is this what I think it is? Oh my gosh... There's no question, it seems, that we have here is the gun. What?! <gasps> oh, wow. A gun? So that's it! Your Honor, please recall this morning's trial when Director Cosmos was on the stand. The bullet that hit the oxygen tank was extremely small, maybe a 10 caliber round. This little compact gun probably takes bullets of that caliber. It looks like this is a gun that was fired at the scene. I'm flabbergasted! The light gun was a gun?! So Detective Fulbright would touch his holster. That's right. Whenever we mentioned the fire, or the Earth emblem, he must have had subconsciously thought about the secret behind the lighter. In other words, he knew it was a gun from the very beginning. Um. A lighter that transforms into gun seems like a spy gadget to me. Yep. It's not that kind of thing that an ordinary person could, you know, get their hands on. Da -da -da. In fact, I'd say it's strictly in the domain of elite spies. Whoa. Detective Fulbright, you will explain yourself. Yeah, how'd you get this, dude? Ha <laughs> ha There's nothing for me to explain. I don't know the lighter could transform. I mean, it was found in the Space Museum, and then I brought it, uh... And then I brought it straight in! Oh... I didn't even have the time to check it out. Objection! Mm. Whenever you mentioned the Earth Emblem, you noticed your holster. Or touched your holster. You subconsciously did that because you knew it was a gun. Excuse- accuse me all you want, but there- where is your proof? Do you have any evidence that I knew the lighter was a gun? Not exactly, no. And whose prints are on it? Miss Sykes' prints. It proves that she is the culprit who fired the gun at the scene! Does it? Yeah. It would appear that the detective is right! Are you guys really trying to prove your client innocent or what? Although it pains me to do this now that we are where we are, I have to make the following assertions coming from the prosecution's side. The person who fired the gun at Director Cosmo in the lounge after the incident, and the person Miss Blackwell saw holding the lighter, and the person who murdered Mr. Terran, and the person who bombed the Space Center, are all the defendant Athena Sykes! The prints on the lighter are decisive proof! No! <laughs> now do you see a man on the side of justice couldn't possibly be the culprit? Mm -hmm. And I think this about sums up Miss Sykes' part in this whole affair. What? The evidence certainly does seem to point to the defendant's guilt. But we just... Do you have anything to say, Prosecutor Blackwell? <sighs> evidence is everything in court. Therefore, Fulbright's claims stand firm. But... Calm down, Apollo. He's just saying that because he has to be the prosecutor. Mr. Lawyer, our job is to pursue criminals in the name of justice. You shouldn't cast as, uh, suspicions on people based on something as dubious as a habit. In fact, you have a bad habit of showing up in court with an awful case of bad head. Bad head! Objection! Objection! Say the man who wears sunglasses at night. It's proof that you won. It's proof you'll get. I'll prove that this lighter is not Miss Sykes, but yours! <gasps> Sounds like you've hit on something, Apollo. It's just that if the prints on the lighter are the basis for accusing Athena, I think we should reconsider the credibility of the evidence itself. You mean you think the lighter might be forged evidence? That's right. It could all be part of Fulbright's bigger plot. Did he do anything out of the ordinary while I was off on my own? I can't definitely think... I could definitely think of a few things. Alright, I need to take a breather real quick. <sighs> this is a lot of time. I'm not even talking at all this nope. whole time. I'm getting a little dizzy. From Athena's me. not even here anymore. 
Aura and Athena and the female robot and Trucy and all of the female characters are gone. It is the Judge, Black Wolf, Fulbright, Ace Attorney, and Apollo. One, two, three, four. That's five men. Different male voices talking. It's a lot of different guys. Five guys in a room. Luckily, I have the testosterone for it. Ha ha! <gasps> Manly. All right. It is indeed. We have a look at this. I'll have to make yes. you a manly steak after this or something. What? What is a lighter? Everybody's like, unfortunately, this whole show is K-Wing. We it's... want Amber. Poor Luke. There, yes! Athena speaks! A detective, we'd like to run a comparison on some prints we found in the boarding lounge. Ah, uh, yes! I just happen to have compiled print data for everyone related to this case. I can always make another copy for myself, so it's all yours. Consider it a gift. Ha ha! Oh! If we assume he's been laying a tr big trap for us all along, there's got to be something about it with this piece of evidence. What's wrong with the lighter as a piece of evidence? It turns into a gun! I don't know. What is wrong with... Uh... Maybe he told us the prince were Athena's. But he lied. Because maybe he just... Maybe he came back with a different result. Maybe the prints were really somebody else's. And then he then he was like, you know what? I'm going to lie so that I can, like, not go to jail and stuff. No, I mean, he's a spy. He'd be executed. He wouldn't need to worry about jail. I don't want to feel bad if he gets executed. But if he kills the guy... Honey, I, as much as I love him, he's putting on a performance. I don't think this is his real personality. He's a spy. Think of him like James Bond or, you know, somebody like that. Okay. Okay. Let's try the owner of the prince. I think so, because I think the prince were not Athena's. I think so. The owner of the prince. Are you really Athena's... Are these really Athena's fingerprints? They definitely matched her print data. Hmm, but what about the data itself? <laughs> Detective Fulbright, you were the one who pro provided us with the lighter and the print data. Isn't that correct? Yes, what about it? You say Miss Sykes' prints match the print data. But I have to wonder, was the data you used official? <laughs> Mr. Knight, are you suggesting that the evidence may have been fabricated? I guess there's only one way to find out. Let's re-examine the prints. Using the official sanctioned print data of the people involved in this case. What? You dare insult the epitome of justice and integrity? There's no need for such antics. Silence. Your Honor, I lend my voice to the defense's request. You must allow the test to be rerun. Very well, then. Bailiff! Yes, Your Honor! <laughs> I'm coming to help! A sixth person! Ah! It appears that the official data is here. Why does the bird still have the jail thing on it? It's a free bird now. <laughs> and the results? Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It's... <gasps> it's just as the defense claims. It proves that the prince and the lighter do not belong to the defendant. Yeah! Yes! Oh, wow. The fingerprints actually belong to the victim, Clay Tannen. Oh, my God. The lighter updated in the court record. Clay's prints were on it? Those were Clay's fingerprints on the lighter? Ah, I see. Come to think of it. Wasn't it you, Fulbright, who collected the victim's prints? I personally removed his glove during the investigation. We had to get his fingerprints to confirm his identity, after all. Interesting. When you took the deceased fingerprints, you could have easily planted his prints on the lighter with blood. After which, you wiped the blood off of his hand. Um. By your own admission, you were also the one who compiled the phony print data. All to point blame to Miss Sykes! Ah! Um. Okay. This ploy must have been to distract us from the Phantom who was behind everything. You were there to create the impression that the Phantom wasn't the true culprit. 
So does this mean Detective Fulbright really is the Phantom? Remember the killer's escape route. Hmm. No ordinary person would have been fearless enough to attempt it. Nobody but the Phantom, the man with no emotions, could have done it. This <laughs> tons of Detective Fulbright, you were the one who could have used that escape route. No, 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 no. I, I. Fulbright, you really are the Phantom. Ah, uh, answer me, or help me! I'll slash you to tiny shivers, slivers with your ah. Answer me, or I, or so help me, I will slash you to tiny slivers where you stand. Yeah! All right, all right, I'll talk. I'll confess. Mm. I am not the Phantom. Silence. It's all over. Now be a man and admit it already. But I'm not a spy! I'm an undercover investigator! I've actually been after the Phantom myself! An undercover investigator? That sounds like a whole less than wholesome to me. A person who hides his identity and secretly investigates in order to uncover information? And that's what you use... You really are, Fulbright? Um, what? How can That's you... right! I was working to track down the Phantom, but sadly... Oh... Even though I was supposed to catch the spy, the spy ended up catching me. He took my family hostage and forced me to cooperate with him. What? what? Objection! You're telling us now? But what if you say is true, then? Who was the mysterious person Miss Blackwell and Mr. Starbucks saw? It was the Phantom, I tell you! All I did was help him by having that emergency ladder lowered for him. Objection! Wow. I don't believe you. Then how do you explain the fabricated lighter? That was also one of the Phantom's demands. Being the detective in charge of the case, it was easy for me to fabricate evidence. Pinning the crime on Athena Sykes was just another way of the Phantom's orders. Do you expect me to buy that? No, this is weird. Fulbright, what was the Phantom's ultimate objective? I was told it was to sabotage the rocket launch. Mm. Someone who didn't want that launch to happen must have given him the order. Huh. Actually, I have to apologize to you too. The Phantom told me to get close to you. He ordered me to get back the psyche profile you have on him. So, he sent a buzzard of his own to tail me this past year, did he? I haven't been a champion of justice. Hmm. I've just been a pawn of evil. Hmm. A pawn of Phantom who stole the moon rock and killed Dr. Sykes seven years ago. Enough, Fulbright. Just tell us the Phantom's true identity. I don't know. He was very careful to hide it. He has top secret information for all kinds of corporations and countries. So there's a number of organizations that want him dead. If people believed I was the Phantom, I could be killed on the spot, why I bet even now! Whoa. There were assassins lurking nearby. This case is about the Phantom, after all. With the ceiling blown off, I suppose you are vulnerable to sniper shot in this courtroom. Just two seconds ago, Fulbright was th treating Athena like a criminal. Does he really think he's gonna lie this way, his way out of it now? But on the surface, everything does seem to make sense. This could be bad, Mr. Wright. If we can't find a flaw in his logic, he's right. After we've come all this way, we can't let Fulbright wiggle free now. There, I finally told the truth. Now I hope you see how foolish it was to think I was the Phantom. Hmm. You're an intelligent man, Prosecutor Blackwell. You believe me, right? Oh, why did his demeanor change? I believe you. I don't think you're the Phantom. What? How can you say that, Prosecutor Blackwell? It's obvious he's the Phantom. Yeah. Silence. Evidence is everything, right, Dono? And you must admit there's no clear evidence that Fulbright is the Phantom. Ugh! Hmm. Mm, yes, I also recall the only solid proof we've seen at this point is the fact that Detective Fulbright fabricated evidence. 
What? Hmm. I've known Fulbright here for a year now. And all this time, he's been quite intent on rehabilitating me. I don't believe his efforts were a lie. Oh, wow. Prosecutor Blackwell! This fool truly thought he could reform a death row inmate like me. He went out of his way in his efforts for me. He actually became quite a nuisance, really. Oh, Prosecutor Blackwell, you believe me! Please tell me Prosecutor Blackwell hasn't really been taken in by this big phony! <sighs> However, even if it was against your will, you still acted as the Phantom's accomplice. You will have to pay the price for that. Throw yourself at my mercy, and don't ever betray me again! You got that? Oh... You... yes, thank you. Oh, thank you! Wow. Sniffle. Oh, such a bond of truth. It's rare and a beautiful thing. <clears throat> In any case, it looks like everything has been resolved. I can now hand down an out guilty Vagnet with confidence. Aha! Very good. I'm very glad to hear it. It's all over. Everything's been cleared up. And Miss Sykes will go free as well. What? Why would she go free? Oh, right. Mr. Wright, we can't let it the trial end here. If we do the Phantom, the man who killed Clay will get away! I know, I know, but... Ah, what do we do? I don't have any proof that Detective Fulbright is a Phantom. Yes, you do! We do. I know, I know, I know! <clears throat> she stabbed the Phantom in the hand! Fulbright always oh! wears gloves! Oh my gosh, Luke, you're right! Get the man to remove his gloves! You're right. You're right. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look, you're right. You're right. Oh my gosh. This yeah, is it. Was... He's gonna get away with that. Now, if you'll excuse me, my next investigation awaits. And with that... I'm off! <laughs> what? Whoa! Hold it! The defense? No, wait! Not the defense! Uh... Yo, Athena! The defendant feels it's time for a verdict yet and would like to see this trial continue! What? But what was that? I was about to declare you innocent of all charges! Hmm. It just doesn't feel right to be standing here. Hey, Apollo, think you could scooch over a bit? Ah! All ah. right, here I am. Sorry, it's a lot of room here. Athena, what are you doing? I hope we uh, don't get held in contempt of court. I have some questions for you, Detective Fulbright. Are you relieved that you are no longer under suspicion of being the Phantom? Are you grateful to Prosecutor Blackwell for what he's done for you? Of course I am. I am truly grateful from the bottom of my heart. Athena, what are you going to do with these questions? I don't like this bench I, is too close now. I have yet to hear a single emotion behind any of Detective Fulbright's words, boss. The suspicion against him has been cleared up, but he's not feeling happy at all. What? Does that mean... That's right. We may not have any evidence, but the heart doesn't lie. That's it. With your special ability, we might be able to stop him. Hmm. Your Honor, the detective has been deeply traumatized by our accusations. Hmm. Yes, well, even before all this, I thought he was a rather odd fellow. If he doesn't get counseling right away, who knows what might happen to him? <laughs> Prosecutor Blackwell, can you believe the nonsense the defense is spouting? Huh. Fulbright, I think you'd better have that counseling session. Not you too! You've been making batty remarks ever since you were accused of being the Phantom. Such as 
You're an undercover investigator and your family's been taken hostage. Huh. I fear you might have finally lost it. B -b -b I thought you believed me! Silence! Ha 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 ha. Oh, how you amuse me so. Well, I guess we'll find out if his What's family. What's going on here? Really is taking off. I don't think he has a family. That was an excellent bit of psychological manipulation just now, Simon! Huh, I knew you would catch on, Athena. Huh? Mind filling me in here? Ha ha! Guess we left you out in the dust, huh, boss? Simon was only pretending to believe, Dr. I mean, Detective Fulbright. I'm a doctor of justice! Because he knew! I noticed if there was a lack of emotions like joy or relief in his response! So he gave me the chance to take a listen. And I... And listen I did to the voice of Detective Fulbright's heart! What? You were... Nani? You two were working together just now? That's right! Oh, come on. Now, Athena, show us what's inside Fulbright's heart. You got it! Time to check the instant replay! Widget, mon ami, let's do this! Widget, activate. Reading, perps, heart. Scanning. Beginning protocols. Searching. Thank you for believing in me, Prosecutor Blackwill. I am an undercover investigator, but the Phantom was coercing me. He stole mm. the moon rock and killed Dr. Sykes seven years ago. Oh, I'm a bad, bad person for cooperating with such a bad man. But he took my family hostage. What else could I do? There's no emotions. Oh, well, uh, no emotions whatsoever. So what do we do? Um... Even with all those over-the-top expressions and gestures, he's registering no emotions at all? Wow. Mm. Um, yeah. It's just like I thought. And right in line with the Phantom Psych profile. Mm. Oh my gosh. Detective Fulbright! This lack of emotion proves you're the Phantom! Hey, what's going on? Wait, hold it! What do you think you're doing, Detective? Me? I'm not doing anything. He's trying to hack into the Moon Matrix program! I can't do anything with it like this! Ah! Fancy device you have there, but I tolerate no cheating, thank you. Hmm. Ah! Sorry about that! As an undercover agent, I tend to use my secret arsenal without even thinking! More like as a spy! Thanks, Prosecutor Blackwell! There! Now that you can't hack me anymore, I dare you to try to hide your lack of emotions from us! Hmm... Ha ha ha! Lack of emotion? What are you talking about? Of course I have feelings! As a matter of fact, you wounded me very deeply with that accusation! What's going on? All of a sudden, I'm getting an overwhelmingly happy reading. Ah, uh, but he's literally crying as a river over there. Oh! Oops, my mistake. How about this? Ah! <laughs> Yikes! Now he's angry all of a sudden! What? Is he trying to pull? Like as not, it would appear our friend is not completely without emotion. It's just as it says, Dr. Sykes' profile of the Phantom. The subject has a unique psychology, psychological makeup with almost no emotional fluctuation. Almost no. Oh, I get it, so he has some emotions, right? Precisely. Which leads me to wonder why you can't sense any emotions from him at all. I believe it's most likely because he has controlling. He's controlling his emotions. Very good, Prosecutor Blackwell. You are correct. It's a result of my daily training. A very important skill for us undercover investigators, you know. Or like for us spies! Seriously? <clears throat> but I wonder why he suddenly showed several strong emotions. Wait a minute, I think I know. I sense there's a feeling you're trying to hide with your exaggerated emotions, detective. 
Aha! Feeling I'm trying to hide? That's a good one! You're the one who's been saying I'm the phantom because I don't have any emotions. I was just trying to show you a range of deep emotions I truly possess. Then you'll have no objections to me analyzing you, right? Thank you for the five gifted members, um, Alex. Thank you, Alex. You're breathtaking. Thank you so much, Alex. I love the Phoenix theme. It's so good. Mm, limited emotions. That's a crazy court case. All right, here we go. <clears throat> No, hmm. analyze away. But I will state it again. I'm not the Phantom! And be forewarned that your analysis will have no effect. Because you're about to see what an undercover agent can really do! Hmm. Hmm. Ah! Me, the Phantom? No way! Oh, wow, it's all... I'm so sad! See, I told you I have emotions! Oh, how dare you accuse me of being someone who killed over a moon rock! Oh, don't regret cooperating with the Phantom, of course! But I'm so glad this whole misunderstanding is cleared up now! Ha-ha! Oh so he's doing every emotion at once. His emotions are going all over the place. Like, how in the world do you... Sadness. Go back. Shock. Alright, Amber, what do you want to do? <laughs> I don't know. Oh! May, I, may I see the different ones? Yeah, of course you can. How do you move? That? Me, the Phantom? No! I'm so sad, Sob! Oh! Me, the Phantom? No way! This is crazy. This is all, all the emotions are happening. Yep. All the emotions are happening here. Oh, I'm so sad. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, this is hurting my eyes a little uh... bit. Oh, how dare you accuse me of being someone who could kill over a moon rock? Phantom of course! Ah, but I'm glad this whole un misunderstanding is cleared up now, friends. <laughs> uh, the one that I mean There's something off with the third statement. Uh here. Someone Sadness who would while kill... he's angry. How dare you accuse me of someone who would kill over a moon rock? Yeah, I think I don't know. This is very confusing. Sadness. Also, how did he know the Phantom was gonna kill over a moon rock? Yeah. That's kind of disturbing. Like, nobody has mentioned moon rock this entire trial, but yet he knows why the Phantom was gonna kill? Alright, here we go! That's weird. I found it! I found the one emotion you're truly feeling. What? Hidden in, the mirror, hidden in the middle of a chaotic storm, I saw one emotion that never disappeared. When you talked about the moon rock, you felt fear that wouldn't fade. Fear? Hmm. Huh. A fear that a man with hardly any emotions feels, huh? <laughs> Athena. Oh, and it was a response to that moon rock statement. Ah. Hmm. Detective Fulbright, I presume you feel fear concerning the moon rock because you lost it, you failed to steal it, your identity will be revealed. Hmm. What to do, what to do, what to do. Uh... Alright, um, well, I mean, he felt s sad. Wouldn't he feel... His identity, maybe? Maybe, 
Maybe he would be afraid or angry if he if he lost it or if he failed to steal it because he would lose his job for where he's working with. But wouldn't he be sad if his identity was revealed because then he wouldn't be able to hang out? Maybe he'll miss Blackwell and stuff. I don't know. You mean he actually made friends? Maybe. Okay, we'll say identity. Of course! That's it! Huh. Enough, Fool Bright. Just tell us the Phantom's true identity. I don't know. He was a very careful to hide it. He has a top secret mission for all kinds of corporations and countries. So there's a number of organizations that want him dead. If people believed I was the Phantom, I could be killed on the spot! I bet even now! There are assassins lurking nearby. This case is about the Phantom, after all. Hmm. Detective Fulbright, I think I know why you would feel afraid. You're afraid of the moon rock will somehow reveal your identity. Hmm. If his identity were revealed, he would be killed immediately. Oh. That's certainly enough to make even the Phantom feel afraid. I thought he was afraid of losing Me? friends. Me? Afraid? I don't know what you're talking about. So, there really is something about the moon rock that would reveal his identity! Apparently so. Wait a minute, maybe the Phantom didn't so much steal the moon rock, but more like he had to take it with him. <laughs> because there was something on it that would reveal his true identity. Oh? Hmm. Uh-oh. What's happening? Where do you think you're going? Me? I'm not going anywhere. Is it just me or was he gonna use that weird watch thing to try to get away? How many more of those toys does he have and where can I get myself one? <clears throat> Detective Fulbright, you will answer honestly to this court right now. Why do you feel fear in connection with the moon rock? Injustice we trust! No emotions, Mr. Lawyer! Evidence is everything. I'm the Phantom because I'm afraid. Don't make me laugh. Whoa! What was that just now? But all human beings have hearts and experience emotions. Sometimes analyzing a case from the psychological perspective what? is the best way to find the truth. Ah! He has a weapon on his watch. Yep. It's all just a waste of time. All your efforts at analysis serve no purpose. And now, in this dark age of law, nobody would believe your claim that it's effective. In an era when evidence is fabricated, do you truly expect feelings to be accepted as proof? And where exactly is your proof that I fear the moon rock anyway? Ah! Well, I admit, I don't have any conventional proof, but I still say that examining a person's heart has its merits. Oh, really? Then why don't you listen carefully with those special ears of yours? Oh, wow. Did he just make one of her ears? Listen to the voices of the hearts of the people in the gallery. Um, what? Why would she do that? Tell this dude's a spy, though. He's got all the gadgets. It's pretty heavy. All I hear is distrust. As you can see, the people are on my side because they all see is a strange little girl using a weird little machine. But it's not like I use analytical psychology to falsely accuse people! Uh-oh, he's got Athena doubting herself. Miss Sykes, analytical psychology has breathed new life into the courtroom. It has freed the hearts of many witnesses and has been kept, uh, has been a key in getting to the truth. Ah, <laughs> oh, what nonsense! Your Honor, the defense's claim is a false one! I don't feel any kind of fear when it comes to the moon rock. I see. Very well, I will give the opinion of this court. In a trial, I don't feel that a person's emotions are quite as compelling as actual evidence is. 
But, but, but your honor! <laughs> there, you see, nobody believes you and your trumped up charges. Mm, however, I do believe Miss Sykes' analysis can contribute to making the truth clear. I have seen her do this firsthand several times with my own eyes. Surely you jest. So, does this mean you will accept my findings in this trial, your honor? Yes. I believe your claim, Miss Sykes. I think there is merit in examining why the witness feels fear in regard to the moon rock. That is the court's opinion on this matter. Then that's a win for me. No, a win for analytical psychology. Now, Mr. Phantom, will you tell the court the reason for your fear? Analytical psychology? Hmm, my fears? Fine! I'll show you precisely why those abstract things can't be considered evidence! <laughs> um, Witness testimony. My fear of the moon rock. I felt fear when I thought about the moon rock because it remain reminded me of the phantom. Yes, I'm very afraid of him because he took my family hostage. What reason would the phantom have to be afraid of the moon rock? None at all. So the very fact that I'm afraid of the moon rock means I'm not him. In fact, I'm on the side of justice. <laughs> oh, wow. And there you have it. Now do you see why I'm afraid of the moon rock? Your personality's changing. You sound convincing enough. But so does any two-bit con artist. It's all meaningless in the absence of evidence. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. The phantom is like the mist. No flesh, no bones. My sword alone cannot cut it. Right, Dono? Huh? with your deductive reasoning and the body of evidence before us. Let us send this miserable phantom fellow to the other world together. All right. You and I, Prosecutor Blackwell, we have a duty to bring the phantom down and restore people's faith in the courts. Indeed, by covering for Athena, I allowed the phantom to escape. And as prosecutor, I gave birth to the people's mistrust with my murder conviction. I bear part of the responsibility as well, for being a suspect of forging evidence and losing my attorney's badge as a result. The two of us and the Phantom, we there are at the beginning of the Dark Age of Law. Then it also our burden to cut away the foul specter we created, is it not? Until all that remains is the righteousness of the court and the faith of the people. <laughs> Trust, understanding, ha! Huh. Fragile ideals of masses who are controlled by emotion. Humans can't truly trust each other, which is exactly why the illusion of trust is so enticing. Objection! Wow. What? Once two people overcome their misgivings, that's where the true, real trust is to be found. Yeah. You're free to believe what you want, but trust like that is stronger than you and your lies always. Whoa. Cross examination time. My fear of the moon rock. Okay, here we go. Cross examine. Moon rock. All right. Ah, <sighs> there's no way this court case is ever gonna end. Mm. I feel fear that when I thought about the moon rock, because it reminded me of the phantom. Holy. Mm. It only reminded you of the Phantom? Don't you make me laugh. You are the Phantom! Evidence is everything in a court of law. Did you forget? I was forced to testify over silly thing like feelings. But those tactics won't work from here on out. You need real evidence. Ah, uh, I hate to admit it, but he's right. Hmm. Oh, yes, I'm very afraid of him because he took my family! Hold it! Your family? Like, who in your family, specifically? Oh, I don't know. Like, maybe my lover, for example? 
for example, maybe we need more concrete answer than that. Ha 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 ha. Maybe my mother, my son, or my daughter, or maybe it was all of them. I'm so sad and worried. I miss them so much. Ha 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 ha. You never said who it uh, was. He's so obviously lying. Look how upset I am. Is it any wonder I followed the Phantom's orders? What reason could the Phantom be have to be afraid of a moon rock? Hold it. You can't think of a single reason what the Phantom might be afraid of the rock? I thought the Phantom wasn't even supposed to have any feelings. How can someone like me, with a wealth of emotions, be expected to understand the guy? The Phantom's a person with very few emotions. Would only be afraid of something really big. Like his cover getting blown. Hmm. I'm willing to bet that the moon rock has something to do with his identity, but what? The moon rock has something to do with his cover being blown. Maybe the Phantom's fingerprints are on the rock! But fingerprints can be wiped off. Then maybe he wanted the rock so bad, he literally drooled on it and left some of his DNA? We're dealing with a spy here, Athena, not a slob. True. But maybe the DNA part isn't to be too far off. So what about the knife that Athena stabbed him with? So he could have had blood on the moon rock. Ah. Oh, some kind of DNA. Something unexpected happened to him during the incident seven years ago. He got stabbed! He maybe, got stabbed! Maybe he sneezed on the moon rock. No! His blood is on the moon rock! His DNA! It has to be! Come on, Phoenix, think! I figured it out! Oh, wait, if he was holding the moon... I just know something that can show why the Phantom is afraid of the moon rock. Oh, did he come Who to... was carrying the moon rock when he got out of the space station? Clay was. That's why Clay was murdered. Oh, wow, because Clay had the moon rock? So Probably Clay he... fought back. Probably took it from him, and then what happened after that? A he... struggle, and he killed him. But then why would he kill her mom later? He killed her mom because he was ordered to get the space rock. And then Athena stabbed him. I just know something can show why the Phantom is afraid of the moon rock. All right, continue with my testimony while you're pondering then, if you don't mind. Hmm. So, the very fact that I'm afraid of the moon rock means I'm not him? Hold it! And how afraid are you exactly? Oh, I'm so scared I start to shake even when I see the moon in the sky! Oh, wow. You shake when you see Miss Sykes' earring? Well, to be honest, since the very first thing I met Miss Sykes, I felt more than a little frightened of her. I guess some people just inspire that much fear in others. Mr. Wright, you were thinking something mean-spirited and rude, weren't you? <laughs> of course not. Must beef up my mind-reading defenses. Now, do you understand? The very fact that I'm afraid of the moon rock proves that. In fact, I am on the side of justice! Hold it! Hmm. Enough of this! After all that you've done, how dare you speak the word justice! In justice we trust! I'll say it as much as I want, and with absolute confidence. Whatever I say it is just! That's how it works in the dark age of law. Ugh. He won't get the best of me with that twisted argument of his. I'll find a way to get him right where I want him. Detective Fulbright, or rather the Phantom, feels fear in regards to the moon rock. It probably has something to do with being afraid that his true identity will be revealed. Right, so... That's why the Phantom had to take the moon rock with him seven years ago. In that case, if we had something to show the real cause of Fulbright's fear, we just might be able to expose his true identity. Well, that was everything. Now what, audience? Alright, well, you said when he made the statement about... Um, you were saying when he made a statement about... Something about... the. You said something... Something about the, like, how the re the phantom wouldn't have to be afraid of the moon rock. Then you mentioned, like, something about the knife, I think. He got stabbed. His blood would be on the moon rock. That's why he couldn't give it back to the space station and why it's been gone. What reason would the phantom have to be afraid of the moon rock? None at all! Do you think we should present the, the knife? I think we should present the utility knife. Objection! Detective Fulbright, I assume you know what this is? 
Of course, that's the knife the Phantom used to kill Clay Terran. Right. And the exact same type of knife... Miss Sykes used seven years ago when she stabbed the Phantom's hand. Oh, yes, that was discussed earlier, as I recall. He dodged at first, so I only got his clothes, but then I tried again. And this time you got him, didn't you? I did. I remember it clearly now. The knife went into the back of his hand. Miss Sykes then stated that she remembers the culprit bleeding. It's my theory that the culprit's blood got on the moon rock, and he was afraid that if the blood was analyzed, his true identity would be revealed. That explains why the Phantom had to remove the moon rock from the crime scene. You mean if he ran the analysis now, we'd know who the Phantom is? Ha 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 ha, yes, I suppose so. But unfortunately, the moon rock in question is missing. That may be so, but I'm certain I can explain what happened to it in great detail. You can? Of course. Not... You don't actually expect us to believe that, do you? Because you don't fool me. Ah! Well, what's this court need? A bully free zone? Oh, the infamous sword of the beguiling. Bluff. Its edges without compare. Come now, ready it with me. And show us just how finely it cuts. Your Honor, this is an outrage! Oh, I mean, this is an outrage! Oh! <laughs> Go on, right, don't know. All right, let's start with something that's been bothering me for a while. Now, the culprit supposedly removed the moon rock from the lab. But in this video of him, it's nowhere to be seen. Well, you're right! But here's something to consider. What if the Phantom hid the moon rock somewhere at the scene of the crime? Good thinking, boss. Security was super tight at the Space Center back then. Uh, oh, in spite of the Space Center having very strict security in those days, all personal effects were examined thoroughly, coming or going. You couldn't even smuggle a withered old leaf through those checkpoints. Hmm. Does this mean that the Moon Rock is still somewhere in the Space Center? In the name of justice, I proclaim that's impossible. And why is that? The Space Center was searched from top to bottom, and especially the lab. But the Moon Rock was never found. Oh, how could I forget that? A sad but true fact. We still haven't grasped on how it was done. But the Phantom made the Moon Rock vanish into the ether. There's no way it just disappeared. Logic and evidence tells us otherwise. No, he blew it up. Mm -hmm. The Phantom didn't have the moon rock on him when he left the lab. Yet, a thorough police search didn't turn up anything. And it never turned up in the seven years after that either. The Phantom made the rock disappear without physically removing it himself. But how? There must have been a way. Think, Phoenix, think! How did the moon rock vanish from the robotics lab? So, can you or can you not show what happened to the moon rock, Mr. Wright? Yeah, I can. Your Honor? Ah, what? Uh-oh. Oops, sorry, I mean... What? <laughs> In that case, <laughs> let's have your answer, Mr. Wright. Okay. How did the Phantom make the moon rock disappear from the crime scene? Well, what kind of evidence do we have? Um, I'm gonna go. I say something with space. There's the diagram. There's the knife. Space Center pamphlet. Oh, what? That says this was returned to Earth a few days capsule. ago. He sent it up into space. How did that go up into space by itself? Because the murder happened before the launch. Oh, wow. He sent the rock into space. Why would... Why would that go into... Take that! What's the Hope Capsule, right? The one that went with the Hat-1 rocket? 
That's right, Your Honor. He couldn't carry the rock out, but he couldn't leave it in the center to be found either. So, there was only one safe place to stash it. The Hope capsule that was there in the lab that day. Yes, and the team must have loaded it onto the Hope space probe eventually. But if that's what happened, then the moon rock would have been launched up into space along with the rocket. Preposterous! It would mean that for the past seven years, the moon rock was... Exactly! The Phantom got rid of the moon rock in the most cosmic way he knew how. Oh my gosh. It was out there in the depths of space. Aboard the Hope Space Probe! What? 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 Poor Black. Nani? If that had not been in space, he could have been not in prison. Order! Order in the court! I understand now. The Phantom's original scheme was to sabotage the Hat One anyway. The villain he used the primary objective to conveniently kill two birds with one stone. That's right. He planned for the moon rocket to be turned into cosmic dust out in space. Thereby destroying the one piece of evidence that could reveal his true identity. But Mr. Starbuck and the others foiled the Phantom's plot. Huh? The Hope Space Probe sailed off safely on its mission and returned seven years later. With the capsule in tow. No! Oh, wow. If we analyze the blood on the rock, it should make one thing crystal clear. That you were the Phantom all along, Detective Fulbright! <gasps> Woo! So he killed Clay just so he could get the moon rock back? I believe so. His original assessment may have been just to sabotage the hat, too, but... At the same time, he also had to retrieve the evidence of his crime seven years ago. That's why he went to the boarding lounge. And attacked Clay as he made his escape out of the rocket with the capsule. But in the end, it was all he could do just to escape himself so he couldn't get the capsule. Clay must have done everything he could to stop Fulbright! He probably hung onto the capsule for all his worth until his very last breath. <laughs> Oh, this is so funny. You make me laugh. You really do. Boy, he's totally out of whack now. It's game over for you, Detective Fulbright. Why don't you just admit it's all over now? There is nothing to admit. I'm Bobby Fulbright, undercover investigator, I tell you. I'm not the Phantom. The blood on the rock is just another one of his schemes. A trap. Hmm, now I'm not sure what to think. I suppose if the Phantom is a spy worth a shot, the trap is not out of the question. Objection! But in case that you could say anything is a trap... hee ho ha 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 That's what makes a trap a trap! I've been framed into taking the blame for the Phantom! Your Honor, please believe the investigation is in order! Silence! Oh, wow. <laughs> Further investigation? More like plotting your escape. But no more. I will bring you to justice myself if I must, here and now! <gasps> well... I guess it's time to show you just what I'm really capable of. Die, Simon Blackwell! Hey, you guys aren't really... Uh, it looks like I've made it just in time. Uh, somebody remove that guy's gun. Edgy! Know, right? I have good news for you, Mr. Wright. I've uncovered some very crucial facts. Did you find something about the Phantom's true identity? You might say that. I started by looking into the first people on the scene seven years ago. All three, an employee and two officers, were registered in the robot's recognition systems. But none of them looked like the least bit like Detective Fulbright. That's not good. But there's more. I've yet to share my most important finding. Mr. Wright, Prosecutor Blackwell, you'd best brace yourselves. Uh-oh. All right, Edgeworth arrives. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Um, 2, 18. Edgeworth is back. Here it comes. Huh. 
The man you see there before you, Bobby Fulbright, is already long dead. Huh? Nani? What's that supposed to mean? An unidentified body that was found a year ago has now been proven to possess Bobby Fulbright's fingerprints. Oh my god. Does this mean. Yes, that man there is an imposter pretending to be Fulbright. He took his identity. An imposter? This man? Who in the world is she? Hmm. Enough of your trickery. If you will not reveal yourself to us, then I shall do it for you. What the? No! His face! Aw, oh, look what you did to my mask. My mask? What is the meaning of this, witness? Okay, you got me. I guess I have to show you who I really am now. What? Oh my god. Wait, but that's... Hey, Apollo! Uh, yup, it's me, Solomon Starbuck. Mr. Starbuck, but that can't be right. You can't really be the Phantom, can you? Silence. Of course not. The real Starbuck was aboard Hat One, which was set to be destroyed. Uh... Yeah, this is just another mask. I mean, I didn't even tell you. Didn't I tell you? An undercover investigator can change identities at will. I can be anyone I want. Objection. Objection. Not so fast. I have the Phantom Psych profile right here. Wait, so did we ever get to meet the real Fulbright, or has he been dead this entire time? I think we met him in other cases. Did, that was the real one. Did we meet him in other cases? I think in the one where we were at the yokai place, that was really him. The yokai place was really him, you think? Yeah, it said he was just dead a year ago, so that was several years ago. I think we met the real one. We never met him? He was dead the entire time? That's messed up. I have the phantom psych profile right here. If we compile a psych profile on you and compare the results, it will prove that you're the phantom! It's time for me to show the world the meaning of the phrase, the end justifies the means. That voice! Those words! Hello. I, I feel like he's just being anyone at this point. I cannot accept such evidence here, Miss Sykes. P -p 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 Professor Means? A mask? I'll take out what I want by any means necessary. Now give me that evidence. Huh? Hmm. Time to take out the trash! Permanently! How could you? Now, do you see how powerful the end justifies the means can be? Silence! How pathetic. You can't even speak without wearing another man's face. Aw, but that's the life of an undercover agent for you. My real face has no meaning of value to me at all. Or perhaps it really is the case. Perhaps if that really is the case, that... You don't even know who you are anymore. Hmm? Hmm. What must you see when you look in the mirror, Mr. Phantom? What an awful lot, I'd wager. Well, aren't you just the master of psychology, Blackwell? That's right. I don't know who I am. I'm always living as someone else for my assignments. But I don't remember what my face looks like. Or even what my personality was like. My face. Memories. Personality, beliefs, emotions, and soul. I left them all behind. I have no self. I am no one. I am nothing but an endless abyss! Nani, what's with this guy? Is he even still human? 
And now we assume our lesson, Professor Wright. Oh, uh, huh? I believe you made this argument earlier. If you were to analyze the blood on the moon rock, you could prove that I am the phantom? Yeah, I believe there was blood on the moon rock in that capsule. Now that we know you aren't even Bobby Fulbright... Your claims of a phantom trap won't work anymore. Oh, then why don't you bring this moon rock in? The decisive evidence from the Hope Capsule? I think I'll do just that. Get ready, because the Hope Capsule is about to seal your... Fit. Ah, oh, fudge! Ooh. It was the courtroom bobbing from the other day. The capsule was in the courtroom as evidence and was blown to smithereens. Oh, wow. It looks like you finally caught on. <laughs> the full marks for the defense forever, though. But what a shame your hope was lost in that courtroom explosion. Oh, wow. Uh, ah! So that's the real reason this courtroom is blown up. It was all for the phantom to destroy that one piece of evidence. Can't believe it. We really reached the dead end after all this way. Just arrest him as he is! Who cares who he is? Is the only evidence we have on this guy really been destroyed? How dare you continue to call me the Phantom? As I've said all along, I'm just a nameless undercover agent. Right. But that's what people call And the defense you. will continue to assert that you are the Phantom! Furthermore, we have proof! Or at least, a prayer! Um... This is getting downright ridiculous. I'm afraid that won't do, Mr. I... Uh, at least put some weight behind your swing, right, don't know. I know, I'm trying. Mm. There's only one thing that can amass this menace, the moon rock. But that was blown to bits in the courtroom bombing. And yet, is it really gone without a trace? What if some tiny part, still little fragment, still exists? Hmm. Yes, and you see the stolen moon rock there, too. The strange black and yellow thing on the left side of the picture. Very well, Mr. Knight, let's see your proof. What evidence would finally prove the Phantom's real identity? I don't know. Ah. Well, what kind of... May I see the evidence? What kind of evidence do we see? Okay, well, we have the badge, we have the space center diagram, we have this knife, um, we have the space center pamphlet, the hope capsule, which is now blown up, we have the hat one exhibit, there's, um, let's see. The bomb! The bomb. Remember, Tony put the pieces of the bomb back, as, as best he could, back together again. Why does that matter? How it was in the courtroom. Oh, the fragments are being analyzed? Mm hmm Okay, if you want to try it, fragments are being analyzed. But wasn't that the fragments of the bomb, sweetheart, I think, not the rock? I don't think that's the fragments of the rock, moon rock. I think that's the fragments of the bomb. See? Those are pieces of the bomb, not oh. the moon rock. Yeah, okay, right. It's okay. Just keep going. Uh... Wait, what did that say? What did that... Her earring? It says the stone is cut from the moon rock. Okay. And isn't that the moon rock he came into her lab and killed her for? I don't know. Um, take a look at this. And what is that, may I ask? This is the last fragment of the hope that I have. This is what will give us the strength to carry on. Um, I see. Not exactly the reaction I was hoping for. Mr. Knight, for your sake, I will pretend I didn't see the embarrassing display. Oh, I guess Please you're right. Please try to get it right next time, won't you? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Oh, I guess I'm Unfortunately, not... it will cost you a penalty. Nope. Ah, is the moon rock really completely gone? Oh. It has to be the bomb. I'm sorry. I guess you were what right. What evidence I'm will sorry. finally prove? So, I guess we'll go with what you said. I got confused. I'm sorry. Why would it, why would they have pieces Isn't of Isn't that the bomb that blew up the courtroom? And the moon rock along with it? Are you saying that this will reveal the phantom's identity? Yes, your honor. Focus your attention on this spot 
taken after the bombing, specifically right here. That looks uh, like a moon rock. Yeah, that looks like a piece of rock. Yeah, that's what I would click on. Take that! Please take a look at this newspaper article. This article for Hat One? Now please note the strange black and yellow rock there on the left. That's the moon rock. And when we look at the photo of the bomb fragments, see how there's a rock-like shape with the same coloration? My, I do see it! Wait, why would they use the piece? It would seem that the moon rock was much more durable than the Phantom thought. If we take a look at all the fragments that the police found, we'll likely find one with blood. And DNA testing on the blood will prove that the witness is indeed the Phantom. Oh my god. Believable. But that's impossible. Huh. Surprised to be sure that's one bloody tough rock. Let us have the fragments tested straight away. Oh, and you'll be having a DNA test too, full bright. Bailiff! Contact the police department immediately and order the testing! That's fast results. Rush you go to Blackwell? What did the test results show? There was a rock fragment that had blood on it and appeared to be several years old. DNA testing revealed. Huh. Well, I'm sure you know full well what is revealed. They're a match. They confirmed it was the witness's blood, didn't they? There's no use in trying to talk your way out of it anymore. Admit it! You're the Phantom! Objection! Oh, wow. Huh? Huh? Mr. Wright, did you just raise an objection to yourself? No, I didn't say a word. That was my objection, Apollo. Huh? Seriously? Creepy. Ah! It was a pretty good objection, too. Don't you think? What? So he can be anyone. Now he's me? So, um, did you have an objection or not, Mr. Wright? Huh? Uh, um, oh, I, uh, no, not really. Uh, no. No, not you, Mr. Wright. I mean the witness, Mr. Wright. Oh, could this trial get any more insane? Mr. Wright, this fragment of rock in the photograph and those just like it. How can they be sure they're pieces of the same moon rock that was at the robotics lab? Care, care to explain what you mean, me? Well, there may have been a rock or two in the courtroom that had my blood on it. But how do you know they're not just rocks? You can't prove they're the moon rock, right? <laughs> Objection! Don't be absurd! Just compare the fragment with the rock in the newspaper article. Anybody can see that they're the same. They have the same exact coloration. Objection! Mm. But maybe it's some other rock with the same colorization happened to be in the courtroom. It's highly unlikely a rock with such unique appearance just happened to be there. But you can't deny it's a possibility. Wow. Stop arguing with yourself, but your blood was found on one of the fragments. We're in the twilight zone. Apollo, there's nothing suspicious about my blood being on a piece of rock. And why not? I know it sounds like an excuse, but... Uh, several years ago, I tried, tripped and fell in this very courtroom and was hurt pretty badly. Maybe that's how my blood found its way onto a piece of rubble. Even he must realize how ridiculous that sounds. Oh, and yet I suppose it's not completely out of the question. Ha <laughs> ha! You see, you're starting to sweat, Mr. Wright. I thought that the worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. You are the last person I want to hear that from! Well, then why don't we get those fragments analyzed? We could ask an expert to verify if they were from the moon rock in the robotics lab or not! No. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that just isn't gonna be possible. And why not? In order to prove that the fragments are from what you say they are from, you'd need a sample of the moon rock from seven years ago to compare it. But that moon rock doesn't exist anymore, and there's no sample data left either. So you see, sort of going back in time, well, there's no way you could prove that any of the fragments are from that moon rock. 
Oh! No! Yes, we can. No. The earring. There's really no way to prove it? The earring. Oh, yeah, her earring had a tiny piece of moon rock. I mean, I guess that would work as long as it's not too small of a piece to analyze. This is an incredibly long case. Okay. Haha! -ha! You're finally ready to throw in the towel? Objection! This is me this time! So, the moon rock doesn't exist anymore, huh? That's mm. right. It was such a valuable rock, too. A shame, really. But it's lost to us forever. He's wrong. It's not completely lost. There's another piece of it right here by our side. A shining fragment of hope that can turn everything around. The final piece of evidence to put this phantom away for good. The defense has a piece of evidence that completely contradicts your claim. You have what now? A final fragment of hope that is passed down with great love and care. We do, Miss uh, Boss? I'm not a miss. We do, <laughs> even if the person holding it hasn't realized it yet. Is this true, Mr. Wright? Pay no attention to him, Your Honor. He's just bluffing, as usual. I wonder if you'll be able to force your biggest smile when you see what I've got cooking. Try me. The piece of evidence that shows the original Moonrock isn't completely out of sorts is... What? But just about the only thing my mother left me are Widget and this earring. Maybe she did love me in her own way. Athena, you may not know it, but your mother left you with a very important piece of evidence. She did? You're bluffing. You don't know anything of the kind. Quiet, me, but we do. Evidence that we finally cornered <laughs> you. Because we have a moon rock of our own. What? Yeah! We, uh... Oh! You mean... Exactly. A gift Dr. Sykes gave her daughter. An item Athena has cherished and worn all these years. As distant as Dr. Sykes may have seemed to her daughter, that fragment of her love. Blood everywhere will shake off the darkness of the past and give us all hope for the future. <gasps> this is a defensive sample of the moon rock. Take that! Whoa. That's a very pretty earring. It's your sample. This earring that Miss Sykes always wears was made from the original moon rock. <gasps> what? All this time? It was right here? Whoa. Got you! No, it can't be. Oh, but it is me. If the composition of the bomb fragments and the earring are found to be a match, then it will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt the origin of the fragment in this photo. And since the test results showed that the blood on the fragment was yours, this means that the identity you tried so hard to hide was finally revealed. The identity I tried to hide. I don't have an identity to hide. It may not have Athena's ears, but now even I can hear the fear in your voice. Fear? I don't feel fear. I left all of my emotions behind years ago. Objection. Objection! Every human being feels fear. You simply can't face the emotions inside you. You can't face them because you have nothing, no love, no trust. And I suppose you do? Yes, I do. I didn't have anyone to support me at first. I couldn't face the fear inside me. Couldn't get over the trauma of my past. Like I said, I don't feel fear. Objection! Then you're just a coward for running away from yourself. When I had my doubts about Miss Psyche, I felt like I would collapse under the weight of fear. But I wanted to trust her again. And I knew I could trust Mr. Wright to uncover the truth. That's why I was able to face my suspicions without hesitation. Running away from myself? <laughs> How can I run away from myself? 
when there's <laughs> nothing inside. Nothing at all. Objection! I know it's hard for someone unwilling to trust others as you'd understand, but people have emotions. It's just a fact of life, and so people can be weak at times. But that's exactly why people need to trust one another. So they can gain the strength to face themselves when things are at their bleakest. Without trust in others, how can you ever hope to face your fears? Face your fears is a killer, who cares? Mm. The fear inside of me? Is this? No. Ah! 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 I'm afraid! I'm scared! I feel fear! <laughs> you can't outrun yourself! Remove that mask and unleash your emotions! You're going down, me! Confront your deal held on! With, With your, your own, own true face. face! My own true face? <laughs> oh my god. No! Please don't! I know you're here! Where are you? I see! I haven't revealed anything yet! Honest! Oh, he's gonna die. Uh, 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 true face! I don't have one! My face! My face! My face! My face! My face! I think someone shot him. Uh, oh, he's going through so many faces. Is this my face? Is it? Is this not it? No! What is his face? Is it me either? Ah! Wow! <laughs> Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> well, that case is over. Well, that happened. Um, shut up. A sniper attack in this very courtroom. Well, I mean, there was a bombing. It chills me to my bones. But the police are doing everything they can to track down the sniper as we speak. Brought you good to Blackwell? How is Detective Fulbright? I mean, his imposter doing? He's a lucky fellow. The bullet didn't hit any vital organs. He appears to be in no danger of dying. Well, that was fortunate for all of us. The analysis of that final piece of evidence Wright Dono submitted is in. The composition of Miss Sykes' earring and the fragment with the blood on it is a match. We can now be certain that it's the fragment of the moon rock in question. The murders and bombings at the Space Center, both past and present. The bombing of the courtroom number four and all his other victims, and numerous as the stars. Under suspicion of all these things, the spy known as the Phantom has been incarcerated. The prosecutor's office is now responsible for his well-being. Huh. There are still a my myriad of things we wish him to tell us about, after all. Yes, thank you, Prosecutor Blackwell. Well, it's time to finally bring this trial to an end. We'll never see his true face, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Before I do that, will the defendant please return to her proper place? Y y yes Your Honor! Longest trial ever! All right, now then, this court finds the defendant Athena Sykes not guilty. I mean, we can always do everything else tomorrow, maybe. Huh? Maybe they're like, I mean, if they're gonna talk longer. Maybe we can do it the next day. Yeah, we might want to do that. Court is adjourned. Hey guys, how much is left of the game? How much is left of Dual Destinies? Well, there's at least an hour left. There has to be. Okay. Oh, wait. I don't know if we have another case or not after this. Or a bonus case or something.
I mean, we could always just do everything else. I, I mean, the thing is going to. Well, be we don't. Like, we don't know how long the celebration is going to be, though. Yeah, we could just do a small stream next time because it's a. It's. I mean, I don't know how long we've been streaming, but it's been a long stream. I don't know. I think it's going to be too long. Two hours and twenty eight minutes. We've been streaming. Thank you for the super chat. Um. Of uh, Alex is pathetic assassin. I would have gotten one of his vital organs. Oh wow, Alex! Thank you, Alex, for the super chat. I mean, yeah, it is kind of weird that an assassin didn't hit his vital organs. I guess you know they weren't very good at their job. Let's just try to finish it, Amber. I'm sure well, there's ten minutes left. We'll just read ten fast. Ten minutes. Yep. I think it's gonna be like an hour and a half. I'm. I don't want to. Congratulations, Mr. Nick! Thank you, Pearls, and thank you for being there for Athena. The least I could do, but Athena was great, wasn't she? She was so strong. Daddy, I'm so glad to see you. Trucy, are you alright? You aren't hurt, are you? I'm fine, Daddy. I was doing magic tricks for the other hostages to keep our spirits up. That's our Trucy for you. I'm really glad to see you're safe. Hello, right? I feel I owe you yet another debt of gratitude. Ah, Edgy, don't worry about it. We never would have caught him if it weren't for all of you. Ah, come on, Edgy. What are we talking about? We're friends, after all. You're the one who has been tracking the Phantom all this time. Plus, you're the one who gave Blackwell permission to serve as prosecutor, right? Yes, well... We knew the Phantom was somewhere nearby. The police and I were trying to find him, but we never did manage to do so until this trial. Well, we never would have won this trial without you. It was your help as Chief Prosecutor that was the key to the successful conclusion. Besides, it was you that saw it that I got my badge back, wasn't it? So you figured it out, did you? Yeah, getting my license back went just a little too smoothly, you know? It should have been much harder after all the evidence forging scandal. Well, I owed you a favor, so... Hey, Edgy! Think we can finally bring the Dark Age of Law to an end? Even the darkest night turns to dawn eventually. Our sun will rise again. Besides, now that Prosecutor Blackwell has been cleared of all charges, a great deal of mistrust towards the court system should have been swept away. You know, you could have said that with a bigger smile, Edgy. Won't kill you. Instead, the furrows in the brow of yours just keep getting deeper and deeper. I should smile more? I think I'll think about it. Ah, the complicated love hate relationship between long rivals. That's uh, probably Miss Woods. Oh, never mind. Mm. Athena, I'm forever in your debt. You weren't to all that trouble even taking the bar exam when you, while you were overseas. <laughs> Well, I knew that if I didn't get your sentence overturned fast, you'd be executed. So I studied and studied. I was frantic. I'm so glad I made it in time. Just barely. I still made it. Ah, that a girl, Athena. It's good to see you finally let your tears out. Huh. Yeah, I survived by the skin of my teeth thanks to you. Shame on you, Simon, for trying to throw your life away like that! It was never my intention to just throw my life away. But some things in this world are more important than your own life. Hmm, like what? My honor-bound duty to protect with my life. My mentor's most beloved treasure. Huh? That's some loyalty. This guy really is a samurai through and through. Well, it looks like we can breathe easy now, kids. Apollo, Athena, thank you both. You did a great job. It took all of us together to pull it off. You bet, boss. What a team we are, huh? It was definitely the most amazing turnabout I've ever seen. I'm a lucky guy. My office has the best, most capable lawyers in the world. Thanks, Mr. Wright. I'm gonna work extra hard to make up for all the worry I caused. 
Apollo Justice is fine and ready to go. Let's hear it for the right agency. Well, nobody's going to try harder than me, so you'd better watch out, Apollo. Simon is free thanks to Mr. Wright. But there are so many more people out there who need our help. You're right, and I'll be needing you both to help them out. So we'll have a long way to go. And we missed one super chat and one highlighted message. Get ready, you two. We won a major victory, but the war is far from over. And there are still people out there suffering under false charges who need defending. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. If we ever hope to fully bring the Dark Age of Law to a close. Hey! I know one thing we have to do! We have to celebrate with a bowl of piping hot noodles! Huh? Ramen time! Nothing like a bowl of Eldoon's noodles after a trial all on Mr. Wright's tab. Yeah! That's how it works at the Wright Anything Agency, right, Mr. Wright? Huh? Huh? Nani? <laughs> As boss, it's your duty to express gratitude to your people for your great work. Yep, it's your huh. time to pay. In that case, allow me to join in the festivities. Be greatly ho welcome a bowl of noodles. Yeah, come on, everyone. Right Nani! Mr. Wright's paying. I have an idea, Daddy. Why don't you just invite everyone involved in the case? The more the merrier, right? Oh, Mr. Nick, look how far you've come. Who knew you'd grow up to be such a generous gentleman? But, but I... Okay, he's paying uh, for like eight people now. Um, um... Guys? Uh, 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 How uh, under, expensive is this ramen? <clears throat> under these circumstances, there's only one thing I could say. Only if I get to join in. Hey, no fair. I want to say it too. Okay, here we go. Objection! <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. So with that, another Let's Play is complete. complete. Oh, never mind. Oh yeah, read fast. I was fast. trying to think of something nice I could do for Polly. So I decided to go around and get a bunch of jobs for him to do. Find a lost cat, install air conditioning, give a computer lesson, find a lost item. You think I should have found a few illegal cases? Nah, it's okay. This is the right anything agency after all. <laughs> Good job, Amber. That was very fast. Uh, okay, Dana and Apollo are so wonderful in court. I better study hard. If I want to be a judge someday, my grandma says eat lots of peppers and they'll ignite your passion. Oh, but I should figure out which to grow, green peppers or red. Maybe I should go with hot as the sun red peppers instead. Da, 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 da. I was hoping they'd have an anime, but I guess not. Well done. The story was excellent. Yep. Thank you, Jacob Langlet, for the super chat. Thank you. Yeah, so the end of the Dark Age of Law, you say? <laughs> How naive. Don't you know it's sometimes necessary to get a guilty verdict by any means possible? What? Are they trying to put me under investigation? The chief prosecutor wants to see me? Uh-oh. You two were amazing, says Crossfighter. Thank you, yelling. Crossfire. Very sweet. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's going to be a lot of yelling. You Thank don't want you to be so here. much for watching, Crossfighter and everyone. I've been asked to debut the great masked wrestler, Tenma Taro. Mm -hmm. He's scheduled to go up against the amazing Ninetales. What to do? What to do? A fight to the death with myself. Why don't you ask Mr. Demon Lawyer to be the amazing Ninetales, too? It's not a bad idea. I'd better you be all for it. Kaka! So we are to meet as foes, are we, my little demon friend? Great job, Dad. You're not going to like this, Linky. You're going to bolt. Now, will you believe it? I'm an elderman of nine tails. Vale now. Pretty impressive, huh? I have a Rex Kruby of... I forgot his, what he sounded like. Uh, what do you make of a little donation to help us out? Hey, you! What do you think you're doing sneaking in there? Ah, the jig's up. You better not run for it! You kind of made him sound like Jackie Chan last time. He sounded like... Oh, okay. I totally forgot. It was so long ago. It's all right. I thought I wanted to be an artist, but after seeing the amazing job Athena did, I started becoming genuinely interested in the law, so now I'm studying for the bar exam. Oh, I'm going to prosecute Athena someday. You'll see. S-E-E. -E. I'm studying my buns off too, but not for the bar exam. I'm going to pass the e entrance exam on my own merit this time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With a score of 100 points, of course, because I'm a genius. Ha! Huh. Juniper, our dreams will live on forever! Wow, Linky's little ears went back. I 
have really sweet boxes for all three of them. They won't wear them. Is this because I want to be a legal journalist instead of a lawyer? But anyway, thanks to the trial, the school newspaper's future is as bright as the sun. Now let's see what the fresh blood has to say in the school newspaper. Our editor cried so hard, her graduation rehearsal, her cardboard box got soggy. Hey now, the one night only reunion concert still remember that evening with a passion. Yay! The president of the student council sang like no high school student I've ever heard. When she's a judge in her own court someday, I'd love to have a jam session with her. Be the coolest trial ever, yeah? I can hardly already hear it now. That's our longest Ace Attorney episode ever, I think. It's. I gave this place a good cleaning from top to bottom, but it's really a mess again. I guess the only thing I can do now is clean up the attitudes of the people in this office. Mystic Maya due to come here once her training is over. It simply must be done. Nicely done, Amber. It's really hard to read these fast, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is tradition, though. Ah, humanity's dreams for outer space will never die. In fact, I'm planning for the Hat 3 rocket has already officially begun. Look upon me, people of this great nation, and witness the glory of your cosmos. Aha! What do you... Oh, Director? Yes, 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 of course. The rocket preparations are fully complete. Yes. Ah, just leave everything to me! Assistant Director, you're in cosmos! Who's the director of the space station now? going to the moon in the new rocket. If Athena or Mommy Mantis came to the moon, I would love to show them around. But which is more interesting? Monacid or Piranus or Mare Tranquilis? You think they would like either one? Yay! Hooray! I wonder how Miss Aura is doing. I'd rather be near Miss Aura than on the moon. Oh, Miss Aura, I just want you to use me again like you used to. Aww. Well, she's in jail. Obviously. Oh, right. That's right. Thank you, you're not going to want to be here. Hey, ready for launch? Five, four, three, two, one. Ha <laughs> ha! Lift off! I'm going to the moon for real this time, for me and for Clay. Thanks to my lawyers, I know I should never give up. But I'm worried. You can't breathe in space, and in fact, it's cold as heck. Oh man, now I'm getting really nervous. Oh. Dude, you went through so many years of training for this. You have to go through so many years of training. Uh... Huh. No, I'm not employed here. I simply came to request their services in defense of my sister. But no one's around, and I've been kept waiting for a long time. And that sort of case brings you here? Oh, your father has accused you, and you wish for Athena to defend him. Huh. Then perhaps he and I shall meet in the courtroom in the near future. Yay, people said Blackwell's growing on everyone because he's nice. He's always been nice. He did everything he could to defend Athena. Yep, he kept Athena safe for seven years. Was very kind. I look forward to our next month's salary assessment. Yeah, please forgive me. <laughs> Blast! Blackwell's acquittal has brought all manner of ills in the prosecutor's office to light. It would seem solving that case has thawed the chill of winter into the warmth of spring. Now I owe Wright yet another debt of gratitude, but I'll repay him one day. You can trust me in that. Why do our cats watch the TV? They like watching the TV. Alright, that's everything now, I think. Oh. So they're showing a recap of everything that happened. Apollo saved her from the bombing. We have Tonate there. Ted, don't... Ted, Ted, Tonate, whatever. <laughs> There's the the guy who's the yokai mayor. Yeah. And ending thoughts. There's Apollo. Epilogue. And yep, thank you for the super chat, Jacob Langlet. Thank you for the super chats, Alex, and the gifted membership. Alex, thank you for the highlighted message for being a member for 29 months, Soul Flare. And I'm sorry, I wasn't able to read the super chat from. Um, Jacob, but we can look at that at, at the end or something. Is there any way to speed up the credits? 
I don't think there's a way to speed up the credits. Mabuki, I missed one super chat to read. Oh, you missed one super chat? Um. Uh. Oh, wow. Maybe I missed a few of them. I mean, they're. I missed, I missed a couple of them. I missed one from Alex and one from Jacob. Pathetic Assassin. Jacob said, is Easter bagel real? The answer is only in Peanuts Classics. Oh, the Easter bagel is only in Peanuts Classics. Okay, awesome, Jacob. Thank you. Gifted five memberships from Alex and Justo. Had it super chat at the beginning. Thank you so much, Justo, Alex, uh, Jacob Langlet, Alex again, and Soul Flare. Thank you guys so much. For the uh, Super Chats, Gifted Memberships, and Highlighted Messages. So guys, um, the streams are running very... Uh, Ace Attorney was very long. Um, so, Final Fantasy will be next. Final Fantasy only has 26 likes. If you guys could um, smash the like button for Final Fantasy, I'm putting the link in now. Just head over there, hit the like button. Um, 40 likes is what we need to start. Also, there's another case. There's not another case with Dual Destinies. Dual Destinies is over. Oh, I mean, people are saying there's another game in the collection. Yeah, I know. There's another game in the collection. I know. And we are planning on doing that, or no? As long as this video gets a thousand views, I don't see why we wouldn't continue doing the series. Yep. That's our prerequisite. If we get a thousand views, then, you know, the series continues. That's how it works. Yep, Spirit of Justice will happen tomorrow if the stream gets a thousand views. It currently has 800 views, which is crazy because we've been streaming for three hours. Still not at a thousand views. So this is the finale of the game, though? This was the finale of Dual Destinies, yep. So we did all of Apollo Justice, now we've done all of Dual Destinies. That so leads... So another Let's Play is complete! I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll be T fine. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, liftoff. Just believe in yourself! The moon's closer than you think! Through the years, I've seen as much joy as heartache, honesty, as deceit. But just as Mr. Starbuck was able to escape the harsh pull of his fears and despair, I believe that hope and friendship can lift us all up towards a brighter tomorrow. The End That was crazy. Ha! Huh, Ace Attorney fighting game. Yes, let's get that. That would be dope. You just unlocked a special bonus in the music and background setting screen. Commemorative. Can we get an Ace Attorney fighting game? I would love that. 
Alright guys, so that is the end of Dual Destinies. Continue to the next game, Spirit of Justice. Nope. Not today. Not today. Next time. Once it gets a thousand views, which hopefully will be easy for people. Yep. So, so if you guys want the Spirit of Justice, you'll have to get a thousand views on this uh, stream. So, good luck. Final Fantasy will be starting up in ten minutes. Uh, make sure you guys get those likes up. The other stream that was going to be happening tonight for Star Wars is being moved to much later, 9.45, 10 o'clock. Um, there will be no um, uh, midnight stream tonight, so I'm going to have to reschedule with our ultimate because mm. there's no way to do it. Unless, because I don't mm, even yep. see how it's possible. No, that's the end of Dual Destinies. That's right, Crossfighter. All right, guys. Um, thanks so much for watching, and head on over to Final Fantasy. God bless. Happy gaming. See you in a bit.